great responsibility to represent yourself, your team, your school, and your community in a positive way. Please choose your words wisely and cheer for your team and your players in a positive way. Negative comments could lead to your rejection.
Hello and welcome to Bill Baker Activity Complex on the campus of Buckeye Trail High School for week two of the high school football season featuring tonight the Harrison Central Huskies and your Buckeye Trail Warriors. For James Huggins producing our broadcast this evening, I'm merely Tom Strasser, and if you're going to bring a big game across the Caleb Graham production airwaves, you better bring a big mouth with you, and I've done that. I'm once again honored to be joined by my partner in crime. He's the BT Hall of Famer, the one and only Chris Starr. And Chris, just take a whiff. Football season is in the air. Yeah, it's nice to be back. Uh, watch a good football game tonight. Uh, the weather is fantastic. Uh, I was expecting it to be a lot warmer and a lot worse, and the weather seems to be fantastic tonight. So happy to see that. Uh, we got two teams that are uh, uh, ready to get started uh, tonight and hopefully give us uh, an outstanding game. And, Chris, when I was down earlier on the field uh, running, you know, the different patterns, the, the – uh, a route tree to make sure the footing was good and it is in excellent shape even with all the rain of course we do have turf here it should be G going by the Harrison Central squad sometimes you just don't realize how big and athletic a team is until you get right down there on the sideline with them this is an impressive team they knocked off uh, a, a fine Claymont Mustang team last week, 36 to 19. They were down 19 to 12, and then closed the game on the 24-0 run to uh, put Claymont away. Uh, Buckeye Trail, the, they got behind the eight ball early last week against their rivals uh, in Noble County, the Caldwell Redskins, and Chris. The Warriors, they fought a battle. They battled all night long, got back in the game, but they paid for it physically. They're banged up. Buckeye Trail with three offensive linemen starters out tonight. Yeah, uh, Buckeye Trail basically relies on the run and ran the ball pretty well, uh, pretty well last week. Got some people banged up, but uh, this week uh, probably going to have to throw the ball a little bit more early, early and often. Uh, whether that happens or not, we'll have to see. But Harrison Central, again, just uh, a team. They got size. They got speed. Uh, the, that's a team that's definitely looking to go to the playoffs this year. And, uh, man, when you got receivers on the outside that are 6'3", 6 6'4", 6 a quarterback from last year that threw the ball really well, and they got excellent speed on the outside and a big running back in the backfield. So it's going to be a hand field uh, tonight for Buckeye Trail. And, and, Chris, you mentioned their quarterback – Hayden Cassidy, he's a senior. He completed uh, eight passes to eight different receivers last week. They've got playmakers everywhere. They've got their big-time uh, running back, the junior, uh, Michael Quito, and uh, he's a load at 6'2", 225, and boy, are they big up front, 250, 215, 225, uh, 205, and 230 across the offensive line. And uh, for Buckeye Trail, uh, Braden Williams, he'll handle the majority of the quarterbacking. Travis uh, Dodd last week had that electrifying touchdown run. He had hurt his hand. Little did we know that he had fractured a bone in his hand. Now he's going to play, we know, defense. We'll see if he's able to uh, protect the ball and play in the offense. Yeah, that's one thing, especially early in the season. You, you don't want to put a kid out there too much and, and risk the, the entire season. So Buckeye Trail really has to be careful about that. And hopefully, uh, hopefully they can stay healthy and uh, we have a good game tonight. Yeah, it ought to be a good game. Like we said, Harrison Central, they're 1-0 on the season. Buckeye Trail comes in 0-1 and uh, – Chris, you're right, Buckeye Trail, they're going to have to try to sprinkle the ball around offensively. Last week they ran for 270 yards, which was outstanding, but with three linemen out and as big as Harrison Central is across the defense, they're going to have to get the ball on the perimeter. Yeah, and, and speaking of Harrison Central again, I mean, you said that, that the quarterback completed eight passes to eight different receivers. And most teams are just trying to complete eight, eight passes. passes. Yeah. <laughs> so 
I mean, that that says a lot about them. Hey, and Steve uh, and uh, Chris, uh, we're getting uh, set for the national anthem, and after that, they will uh, observe a moment of silence for the Harrison Central uh, community yeah. who, and the football team who lost tragically lost one of their classmates last week. So let's turn it over to Doug Hanna and uh, the Buckeye Trail Band, 60 strong for tonight's national anthem. Thank you. And if everyone can please remain standing. Well, we have a, I just got a, a ribbon, a morning ribbon from uh, Harrison Central Husky. Please stand with me in a moment of silence as we gave tribute to the students that lost their life last week. Thank you. We stand with you, Harrison Central Huskies. Sorry about your loss. All right, and uh, you heard the moment of silence for uh, Zane Carson, who tragically lost his life last week. A classmate at Harris uh, Central, and uh, you know our thoughts and prayers remain with uh, Zane's family as well as the Husky community. So uh, both teams are getting set to come out in the uh, Chris Buckeye Trail home opener. A lot of excitement. Uh, big crowd, and uh, I tell you, you look at the, the track, it's amazing how much work they got done this week because there were a lot of uh, big sand dunes as a, even as far as yesterday. So uh, credit the crew here at Buckeye Trail as well as the uh, equipment guys who have come in and been working on the track to try to get it ready. And a uh, job well done. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing what turf does for football. I think it's been, uh, uh, it's been amazing for Buckeye Trail. Just, I mean, you think about the rain we've had this week. Typically, if you had that rain, you wouldn't be able to get on your home field at all, really, to practice. And uh, just because if you ruin the field, the first game of the year, it's pretty much ruined for the rest of the year. So. It's really nice that we have turf here, and a lot of a lot of schools around the area now do have turf. It makes things so much better as far as playing conditions, and the the style of turf they have uh, today is so much better than what it has been in the past. It's like playing on a big cushion, so it's, it's the safety issues are are a lot better, and it's uh it's just a beautiful field. The, the complex here, once they get the track done, uh, is really going to be amazing. Yeah, and it's hard. You look across at the baseball field, uh, it's turfed, the softball field as well. And in fact, the football team went over to the baseball field. You can see they lined the part of the outfield there for line so them and the band can both uh, get ready to perform each and every fr Friday night. Now, you know, we, we touched on Harrison Central and some of their playmakers. Chris, let's look at Buckeye Trail. And when it starts playmakers, it starts with number 34, Cohen Egan. He had three touchdowns last week, had over 100 yards rushing on 11 carries, and uh, including an electrifying 90-yard kickoff return. So how important? 
imperative is it going to be for the Warriors to be able to get Egan touches tonight? No doubt. Uh, he's he's their big play offensive man. And I think last year against Harrison Central, I think he ran one back against them. So, And I think he had a couple others he almost ran back. So I think I have a feeling that they're not going to be kicking it deep <laughs> this year. I'll be shocked if they do. But, I mean, Cone Egan, again, he is a huge uh, big play playmaker for Buckeye Trail. But, again, he's a small in stature, so he's not going to be a guy that's probably going to carry the ball 25 or 30 times just, just because of his build. But, man, when he does get the ball, he is electrifying. But someone who can carry the ball that many times is he, if he has to is the fullback, and that's Charlie Perry. Uh, he's a load. And when you look uh, as far as trying to get the ball downfield, we mentioned Egan. Brady Hastings, he's a tight end, but they'll also split him out and look to uh, attack deep and down the seams with uh, Hastings. Yeah, Brady's uh, probably 6'3", about 215. He's a nice-sized kid, uh, very physical kid. Uh, they, they got some other weapons, Charlie Perry inside, running the ball inside. Buckeye Trail is one of those teams that really has to kind of balance it out, spread it out, give everybody a little bit of – uh, a, a little bit, of, a, a few touches all over the place for them to be successful. And tonight, probably even more so than what they have in the past. So probably going to throw it a little bit more uh, to, get, to get the get the ball moving. So it'll be interesting to see how this goes. So And it will be Buckeye Trail receiving. And, uh, Chris, as we get set for the kickoff, can you run uh, through our 14 sponsors? This broadcast wouldn't be possible without them. All right. First of all, we got Stop 9 Church of Christ, 360 Burger, Southeastern Equipment, Bears Den Steakhouse, Dennis Stout, Southeastern Ohio Counseling Center, LLC, Old Washington Presbyterian Church, Mr. Lee's Family Restaurant, Darcy A. Wakefield Family Dentistry and Orthodontics. Scott Ogle Realty, Connor Push Carriage, and Jacobs Venom, Venom Insurance Agency. As there's a squib kick, and it will be uh, fielded by Charlie Perry right at the 30 yard line. Carry on, my man. And we got Bicon Services and Engineering. Uh, Deep Cut Tavern and Marathon Stations. We thank you guys very much for sponsoring this tonight. All right, and Buckeye Trail offensively will look this way across the offensive line. It will be left tackle Jackson Hess, left guard Briar Walter, center will be Wyatt Connor, right guard Bucky Johnson, and the right tackle will be Ty McGlumphy. As going under center will be Braden Williams. And he will hand off to Perry. He'll look to turn the corner. And he finds a nice run up to about the 36-yard line. There's a flag coming in as he was uh, tackled by Parker Hutton. Yeah, I think there was a face mask on that one. So uh, it looks like they're going to tack on a few more yards for Buckeye Trail. I tell you, Parker Hutton, boy, is he the playmaker Wide receiver for the Huskies. One of a couple, and you called it personal foul. So add 15 yards. That'll take it right up around midfield. We'll look at the rest of the line of tight end. Brady Hastings. Wing back will be Jansen Alloway. Wide receiver Lane Wable. Fullback Charlie Perry, who just carried that for six yards. Cohen Egan. It's running back and Braden Williams, the senior. Number two. It's the quarterback. We'll give you the Huskies defensive lineup after this play. So first down and 10, ball at the Husky 49-yard line. Um, and Harrison's in a 4-4 look, so. Well, they've got everybody within seven yards of the line of scrimmage. And here's Egan, and he gets a nice run, and he, he's still battling. He'll get about to the 41-yard line. Man, he is knocked out of bounds by uh, Brady Heyer and Michael Keto. Let's look at that uh, defense. Left at a uh, defensive end, Lucas Thomas. Defensive tackle, Landon Thomas. Defensive tackle, Hunter Bowles and Michael Keto. The other defensive end, your linebackers are Parker Hutton, Nico Worsham, and Blake Atkins, the cornerbacks, Alex Fluharty and Brady Heyer, your safeties, Cam McAfee and Chaz Culberson. Quarterback sneak, 
and Williams will pick up about eight to nine yards. So a nice opening drive here for the Warriors. Yeah, Warriors just uh, snuck it right up the middle and Harrison didn't look like they were ready for it. So uh, Buckeye Trail doing a really nice job up front of moving Harrison Central. We want to thank you for joining us here on Caleb Graham Productions. So it'll be first down and 10, ball at the Husky 33-yard line. Warriors on the opening drive, and they're being very patient. Try to shorten this game. Ball goes to Perry, and he is stripped and fumbles the football. And they're going to say the Huskies have it. And coming up with that fumble, Chris, was a Nico Worsham, the middle linebacker. Yeah, they did a nice job. Harrison Center is really going hard for the ball, and uh, they got a good hand on it and stripped it loose. And, uh, again, that's a, that's a drive that was promising for Buckeye Trail, but it ended in a turnover. So Harrison is going with uh, a spread look. They got twins to the right, twins to the left, and a tight end to the right side. So, And this is going to be Keto. The 225-pound tailback, and he'll get it over the 40 to about the 42-yard line. A gain of eight, Ty McGlumphy on the tackle. We'll do our best to give you the Huskies uh, line. We'll have to do it in bunches because they run a high-octane offense. It's Keto again, and he's going to have the first down as he plows over midfield to the 49. Yeah, and he just ran right through uh, the McGlumphy boy, who's a big kid. He's about 270 pounds, uh, ran right through him and then into a couple other tacklers, so he is a load to bring down. So Hayden Cassidy, the outstanding senior quarterback, he, he gives the ball to the backup the tailback, and that is going to be Blake Atkins. And I tell you, the Huskies establishing uh, the running game here on this first drive. That was a really nice job by Tyler, or the Dodd boy, who come up and really put a hit on the, on the running back. Even with a broken hand, he's laying the hammer down, so nice job by him. And this is going to be Hutton. On the jet sweep, and he's going to lose yardage as Charlie Perry comes in to clean things up. Let's look at the line. Left tackle, Landon Thomas. Left guard, Reed Arball. Lucas Thomas is the center. Jaden Harris, right guard. Hunter Bowles, the right tackle. So it's going to be now third down and six. And Buckeye trails in that 3-5, so you don't know where they're going to bring guys from. They try to mix it up because they're not real big, so... Cassidy all day to throw, and he's going to have a first down as the pass is completed, and that is going to go to Cam McAfee. And he'll get it all the way down to the 25. Your wide receivers, Alex Fluharty, Cam McAfee, Clayton Vermillion, and Parker Hutton. Michael Keto is your running back, and Hayden Cassidy will be spinning the football. Pistol formation, and there's a. Yeah, Harrison Central has gone to that spread look, and they're really spreading us out. And it, I think they ran it a few times early. Buckeye Trail really, really clamped down on. Now they're going to go back to the pass. And one thing about Harrison Central, uh, if you take one thing away, they're going to spread you out and make you make you make you guard and bow. So. They've all done a good job. All right, that. and uh, Chris, a couple of our sponsors. Scott Ogle Realty proudly supports all Warrior student-athletes and FCA. Call us when you're ready to talk real estate. Experience the caring support you deserve with Southeastern Ohio Counseling Center, your trusted partner for comprehensive mental health and addiction services. With their main office in Old Washington and additional offices Marietta, they're easily accessible to assist you. Service, servicing children, adolescents, adults, right where you need us. Be it at home, in the community, or at school. So now it's going to be first and ten. And it's uh, Keto, and he's got a big hole over the right side. 
and he'll get about to the 16-yard line near a first down. Jansen Alloway comes in on the stop. Yeah, that was a huge hole in the center of the line that time, and Buckeye Trail eventually corralled him up and put him to the ground. And now we'll try to squeeze in the Warrior defense. There's a pass to the outside. It's completed to Hutt, and he will have the first down. He gets it down to about the 12 for the Warrior defense. Defensive end, Brady Hastings. Defensive tackle, Wyatt Connor. Your nose guard, Jackson Hess. Defensive end, Ty McGlumphy. We'll give you your yeah, Warrior Buc linebackers after this play. Buckeye Trails bounce down to a 4-4 look. Cassidy will keep it. Can he turn the corner? He'll be ran down by Hastings at about the four-yard line. Also, Egan on the stop. Man, that was a nice job by Brady. He, he was defensive end. They got around him and basically broke contain, but he was able with his speed to run him down and catch him from behind, or he probably would have scored. Really nice hustle play that time by Brady Hastings. So now it's second and goal. Ball at the four. And that will be Keto, and he will walk into the end zone for the Harrison Central Husky touchdown. So with 7.41 left here in the opening quarter, an impressive drive after the turnover has given the Huskies the early 6-0 lead. And now, Chris, one thing last week, the Huskies, they struggled some with their extra points. But this is going to be Keto attempting this one. So there's the snap. It's down. The kick is up. That looked pretty good. And it is good. 7.41 left here in the opening quarter from Old Washington. Your score, Husky 7. Warriors will be getting the ball back after this timeout. Welcome back to the Baker Activity Complex here on the campus of Buckeye Trail High School and the Huskies. Like I said, they got it rolling in the second half against Claymont, and uh, they have continued that run. Here's a chop in your right. They're not going to let Egan touch the football as it will be downed at the 36 by the Warriors. And that's uh, Travis Dodd. And yeah. you're right, you can see the little mini club that Travis has. And, and that's a shame. You know, we talked about the three offensive linemen you're missing, but Travis Dodd is, is a playmaker with the ball in his hands. And uh, he's not going to be able to really play offense tonight, I don't think. Yeah, and he, he, he plays hard, too. That's one thing about the Dodd boys. When he gets after it, he gets after it. Alloway in motion, and the ball will go. Mason Todd uh, the, that's Mason Todd, and he will be dropped for, I think, maybe a yard, yard loss. No, they're going to give him forward progress. They're going to give him a yard as McAfee in on the tackle for yeah. Harrison Central. Yeah, he, he barely got out of the backfield that time. So Harrison Central is really probably going to come up and press the line of scrimmage. Now Buckeye Trail hurt him with the run early, and and uh, we'll see how they adjust. But, Chris, just look at the size and length on that defensive line for Harrison Central when they're standing up. They are imposing. Shotgun formation, two receivers split to either side. Williams has time, throws it, and there's going to be a – Pass intended for Egan, but he goes down, and they are going to get Harrison Central, and that would be Cam McAfee with pass interference. Yeah, that's that big playability. Even though Egan may not have caught that, he, he put the defense, they, he stressed them so much that they basically tackled him so they couldn't, he couldn't get by him. So 
uh, again, gives Buckeye Trail a first down and uh, a passing opportunity. They didn't complete it, but they get a first down. And, hey, credit the offensive line. Like we said, uh, three uh, backups stepping in tonight against as good of a defensive line as they will see this year. And they gave Williams uh, – the nice pocket there to throw the football. Yeah, he had plenty of time to get that off. So nice job by Buckeye Trail offensive line. Three receivers to the right. Williams again will drop back. He, he throws it inside the pass intended for Alloway incomplete. Yeah, and he had him. He had him. Looks like the ball just come out of his hand funny. And, you know, Braden is actually a really good passer. He throws the ball pretty well, and I think he just – May have gotten a hold of the ball the wrong way or whatever, but didn't get a good one off that time. But he had him open, too. He would have probably got four or five yards on that one. Chris, have you – do you know any of us lefties that can't spin the football? I know it? one. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Our producer. <laughs> James Huggins, who had a nice football career at Meadowbrook, by the way, is raising his hand. And this pass is intercepted, one-handed wow by Parker Hutton. Parker Hutton keeps his feet inbounds, makes a nice defensive play. First down, Huskies. Hey, man, he went up, got it one-handed, and uh, did a nice uh, – Toe drag swag there on the sideline yeah, to was keep a, his feet in. That was a nice job to, 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 to make the catch and get your feet in. So it was a good job by the uh, Harrison Central defender. Harrison Central back in that spread look with a single back in the backfield beside the quarterback. And yeah, three receivers to the left. And they're going to run it. And it's Keto, and they, he is going to be dropped. And Mason Todd coming in from his linebacking position. Chris will try to get the, the rest of the defense. Outside linebackers are Blake Wable and Jansen Alloway. Inside linebackers, Charlie Perry and Mason Todd. Your corners, Sammy Brown and Cohen Egan and Travis Dodd is your safety. So yeah. a loss of two. Cassidy looking, still looking, running out of time, coming back, now throws it over the middle, and it is going to be incomplete. Here's a flag. This is going to be pass interference. And there's a flag back that's going to be roughing the passer. So you're going to get 15 yards on the pass interference, and then you're going to tack on an additional 15 yards for roughing the passer. Do we know if the first one was pass interference or not? I believe so, yeah. he. It, it came from the back Two judge, and he had a nice arm. He threw, the, he threw the flag about 15 yards. See, it's laying. You, you see it laying at the Buckeye Trail 42. He was back at about the 25. He is holding his shoulder, though, I think. So. <laughs> well, we know – we don't know who our back judge is, but we do know it's not Luke Hutchison <laughs> who officiates. So we can uh, eliminate uh, Luke on tonight's uh, crew. So there's 15 for the pass interference. And now – Oh, so they can only take one of them. Okay. Because the other one wasn't a dead ball. Okay. So, yeah, you can only take one. And the ball is about on the 40, and uh, Buckeye Trail sitting in that 3-5. Harrison back to that spread look. That Cassidy, pistol formation. That looks like Atkins to his left. Just under six minutes left. And, and here's a illegal procedure as running the football. That was a Bo Rinkus. They're, they're – uh, Excited about him, the 5'10", 160-pound sophomore. Yeah, I, th I talked to some guys last week, and they thought he really ran the ball well for him when he come in and, and, and gave uh, Keto a, 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 a spell. He come in and ran the ball extremely well. They were extremely happy with him last week. And and that is – that just sounds like a football name, Bo Rinkus. Cassidy, so five-yard penalty. He swings it out to McAfee. He makes a couple of guys miss. 
And uh, Hastings going for the football, I think, may have accidentally got the helmet. I'm not sure what the penalty flag is for because I was. Fl I think they threw that before. Yeah, McAfee's helmet accidentally got pulled I, off. <laughs> I think. I think it might be holding against Harrison Central. You yeah. called it all. Yeah, I, so. I tell you, Hastings went in for the strip. Yeah. McAfee lost his helmet. I think he so got I just him. assumed, but you you called it. Yeah, I think they got a holding call, and, and the Buckeye Trail defender there got him by the, the base of the helmet and basically pulled it off. So well, You were on that. The Buckeye Trail did a really nice job that time of keeping contain on the outside, forcing the, the offensive – person back to the inside and allowing that pursuit defense to, to catch up. The worst thing you could do is give up the outside. And they did a nice job that time of, of containing Harrison Central. So now Harrison Central, it's going to be first down in about Quaker City to go. They have to get down to the 30-yard line. Yeah, so that, about 24 yards. Yeah, they, uh, they got a ways to go. Harrison back in that spread look and uh, – Buckeye Trail is going to probably have to defend the pass here for two or three possessions. But you never know with Harrison, when you get people spread out, that's when you can run that, that uh, quick trap inside, and, man, that really can cause you trouble when a team spreads you out. So they're now getting set. Three receivers to the right. you got to watch out for Hutton. Rolling to the right is Cassidy. He throws a short one, and getting over midfield to about the 48 is Culberson. Yeah, that, again, that was a great job by Buckeye Trail. Again, giving them the short pass and then sprinting to the ball and making the tackle, giving up some yards, but again, making the play, and that was Mason Todd doing an outst outstanding job, and uh, the Wable boy also did a nice job that time. So it'll be second down and 20, a gain of about three. So they throw another little bubble screen, and it's incomplete pass. Yeah, and they had it set up. That's that bubble screen where you uh, that your offensive linemen allow those defensive linemen through, and they go downfield and block. Well, they had a nice lane that time, and the receiver just didn't bring it in. Kept it, got his eyes looking downfield and dropped it. Yeah, I think that was Vermillion. So Harrison Central at third and about 20. So the Warriors, they're going to blitz. That's Hastings, and there's a screen. Oh, it's intercepted. It Jackson Hess. Jackson Hess. Man, that was that was created because Buckeye Trail blitzed on the outside. Brady Hastings got early pressure on the quarterback. He had to get rid of it, I think, a little quicker than he yeah. wanted to. And uh, Jackson Hess stepped in front of it and picked it off. So great job by Buckeye Trail defensively that time. Wow, and I great job there, Jackson Hess, reading that as Hastings. Like you said, Hastings doesn't get – you know, a sack or anything there, but quarterback pressure, that forced the turnover, and every defensive lineman's dream is to intercept one there. So Jackson has, I'm going to say that's probably his first career interception. Here's a handoff to Perry. Perry trying to turn the corner, and he is going to be tackled by Hutton. I think that was the Todd boy. That oh, Todd, time. my yeah. bad, yes. Uh, he tried to get it up inside. There's just nothing there and tried to bounce it and wasn't able to get anything. So it's going to be second and long for Buckeye Trail. I don't think maybe got a half a yard that time. So the aforementioned Charlie Perry joins the line up here. He's going to go out with Alloway and Egan to the left. And Buckeye Trail is running the spread. They're spreading them out. Williams is going to roll to the left. He's got a man open in the flat. That's Alloway. And he will get to about the Husky 42-yard line. And that, that tackle that time was made by number 22, Cam McAfee. Yeah, McAfee come up from his uh, safety position. So now third down and three. 
Buckeye Trail, nice job of just spreading the field, making, giving an easy, and actually rolling that way to, to give uh, the quarterback a little extra time, uh, threw a nice pass, and got a nice game. Sammy Brown, the sophomore, checks in. It's a lone receiver to the right. Let's see if they quarterback sneak it. And they do. It worked last time, and it's another big game. Yeah, uh, Harrison just isn't quite ready for that, and they're not really clamping down the middle. So Buckeye Trail is going to take that four-yard gain every time on that sneak. And really nice job of the offensive line getting off the ball, creating some push, and giving Buckeye Trail an easy first down. And, Chris, that has to be something that the uh, coaching staff for Buckeye Trail noticed on film last week in the Mustang game because that has worked for big yardage twice so far. So shotgun, Williams looking, is going to have to tuck it and run it, and he is going to be dropped back to the 40. That's about a four or five yard loss. Uh, yeah, I think they're going to mark him about two yards loss. They kind of carried him back that way, but Again, just wasn't anybody open that time. He, he tucked it in instead of just throwing it up. So, uh, took the loss. But uh, when you pass, that's sometimes you're willing to accept. Tackled by that time linebacker Blake a Atkins, 5'11", uh, 195-pound junior for Harrison Central. Well, I tell you, Atkins hits you enough like that, he'll put you on the diet, won't he? No doubt. <laughs> I got to admit, that was pretty good. Williams throws up, but short hops it to Perry. Perry wouldn't have had the first down, but it would have got him down to the 30, and that ball just seemed to slip out of Williams' hands, and that's two. And yeah. you got to wonder, it, it's still hot and muggy. Yeah, uh, he had him wide open, too. He just ran a curl right on the outside, and he was, he, he was about eight yards down the field, and he just short hopped it, uh, kind of rushed it, I think, but he was there. And that's something Buckeye Trail is going to have to work on throughout the years, just throwing the ball a little better and getting better at it. And they will as they continue to work at it. So it's three receivers to the right, third down and 12, ball at the 37. Rolling out, Williams throws it over the middle, and that's going to be nearly intercepted by Hutton. As that ball was tipped before it got close to Hutton, intended for Egan. And uh, – Chris, we mentioned Williams, left-handed quarterback. That's maybe the hardest throw for a quarterback if you're left-handed is rolling to the right and then trying to set and throw back across your body. Yeah, it makes it difficult to do. I don't know if Buckeye Trail is going to go for this or maybe try to pooch it, get the ball down in there and kind of pin Harrison Central back a little bit. Looks like they're going to go for it. There, Buckeye Trails in the spread look. Uh, I, they got a tight end and a, and a wide receiver to the right, three receivers to the left. Williams dropping back, throwing it deep to Hastings, and it is all. Oh! Hastings, Hastings went up. He was covered by Brady Heyer, who comes in at 6'3 himself. And uh, Hastings tipped it up, but just could not quite reach it. So. Yeah, I think they just got Brady isolated on the outside and threw kind of a jump ball and uh, was hoping that he would be able to go get that ball. And just Brady didn't make the greatest play on the ball, but just wasn't able to come back quite enough and make a play. But Buckeye Trail gave himself a chance. And here's Keto. He's going to be stuffed right at the line. And I tell you, Buckeye Trail's defense has been stout since that opening drive as we're under two minutes to go here in the opening quarter. Yeah, Buckeye Trail has really stepped it up on the defensive end. That time again, Wyatt Connor was in on that tackle, and I'm telling you what, he's not the tallest individual in the world, but he is a load, and he moves well. So uh, he's in on that tackle again. Three receivers to the left. Again, Keto has it up the middle, and he's got running room. As he breaks one tackle, two tackles, in the Buckeye Trail territory around the 43. Yeah, he just he broke that initial line of scrimmage, got into the secondary, and then uh, the defensive backs were just bouncing off of him that time. So he's a big kid. They're going to move it back to the 44. So a gain of about 18 by Keto as he will go out. 
Cassidy will keep it around the right end, and he will just run out of bounds. Ran out by Mason Todd. Yeah, that was just the old, uh, they run the uh, slide inside with the fullback. They kind of ride him in there, hoping that the defense will collapse on it. And then Cassidy kept it, and the defense didn't bite, so they were able to just run him directly out of bounds. Good call, partner. That was Ty McGlumphy, the defensive end, who stayed home. And this run is not going to go anywhere. Yeah, Buckeye Trail again stuffing it inside. They got another a third and probably about nine here. Uh, Buckeye Trail's really stuffed the run other than a few big runs. They've done a really good job tonight against the run. Yeah, that was Blake Atkins. And so he is uh, stopped. So third down, we'll call it nine. Cassidy looking. He's got a man open. It's caught. But Hutton goes down. He's going to be short of the first down at about the 38. And I think Harrison Central may let the quarter end and uh, think about this play. We'll, we'll see. Yeah. And, and that's what they're going to do. Yep. So we'll take a timeout here as this ends an exciting first quarter of play from Old Washington. You're – Score after one quarter, Harrison Central seven, Buckeye Trail zero. We'll take a timeout and be back for second quarter action here on Caleb Graham Productions. Welcome back to the Baker Activity Complex here on the campus of Buckeye Trail High School. We've got a good one here. 7-0 Harrison Central. Huskies with the lead and the football. Fourth down and four from the Warrior 38-yard line. And Harrison's going to go for this. They got, they're in a spread with trips to the right, a single receiver to the left. So here we go. And uh, rolling. It's Cassidy, he's still looking. He's got running room if he can get the corner. And he does, and he will get the first Katie down. Cassidy on the scramble picks up enough for a Husky first down at about the 34 and, yard And line. Chris, the impressive thing there about Cassidy, he rolled over to the right hash mark. When he took two steps to the left, he knew he was running the football. He seen an opening and knew he could get there and he got to the 34. Yeah, and Buckeye Trail did a good job of covering up the receivers that time. And just uh, when you got when you got a three-man rush, it's really difficult to get the quarterback down if he's a pretty good athlete. And Cassidy, who's a pretty good athlete, played basketball for Harrison, was scored a lot of points for them last year, and uh, did a nice job. So typically, your quarterback in high school is a pretty good athlete, and this, this Cassidy kid uh, is a pretty good athlete. All right, so had a little equipment malfunction there, and that was Jackson Hess who had an interception on the Huskies' last drive. His defensive tackle got his helmet taken care of. Hastings coming off quick and tips it, and wow, Brady Hastings is timing up that uh, snap count. Well, and when you're six three and you're defensive end and you're a pretty good athlete, he did a nice job getting off his feet. In the last play, he did a great job of containing Cassidy on this side, and that was the main reason why he turned back and went the other way, and was able to get that first down because Brady Hastings did a nice job uh, keeping contained. So second down and ten. Keto runs it up the middle, and he will get to about the. 30-yard line, call it a gain of four. 
So it's third down and six again for Buckeye Trail, but probably going to be two down territory for Harrison Central. So, And I think that was Todd and McGlumphy on the tackle for the Warriors. So third down and six. You know Harrison Central's in four down territory. Cassidy dropping back, looking. No one open. Being chased. Now, and nice defense there by Cohen Egan. Yeah, really nice job. Man, Cassidy, if he could have been a little more patient in the pocket that time, he had the deep cross wide open, but he kind of bailed on it early. And a really nice defensive job that time by Cohen Egan. So it's going to be fourth and about seven yards for Harrison Central, and they're going to stay in that spread. And Try to get it. And boy, I tell you, defensive coordinator Terry Perry, he's got to be ecstatic the way his defense has stymied this Husky offense since the opening series. Cassidy throwing. He's got a man open, and that's Flu Hardy, and he's got the first down, and he's going to break a couple of tackles and get down to the 14. And, uh, Chris, again, the, the big weapons, you look at uh, Flu Hardy, 6'4", 160, and uh, they yeah. lost him out there. He's a lot bigger than 160 pounds, too. Yeah. They list him, and there's no way that kid <laughs> weighs 160 pounds. Pistol formation, Quito gets the ball, and he makes a nice jump cut, gets to about the 10. Gain of five, McGlumphy on the tackle. McGlumphy on the tackle that time, did a nice job. Buckeye Trails did a pretty good job against the uh, the run for the most part. They just, they get him in fourth down or third down and just can't can't seem to make the big play to end the drive. Ty McGlumphy's been very active from his defensive end position. So second down and six. Huskies can get a first down at the four. And this is Atkins. He takes on a would-be tackler, and he is going to scoot into the end zone. Touchdown, Huskies. So at the 10-02 mark of the first half, the Huskies go up by two scores. Yeah, I think that time Blake Wabel, uh, he's a sophomore, uh, got the first clean look at him, hit him high, and just kind of bounced off. He should, he's going to have to tackle a little bit lower on a little bigger back. Blake's not real big either. He's... He's a sophomore, probably weighs about 150 pounds, 155 pounds, and just bounced off the uh, running back that time. So this this yeah. kick is blocked by Hastings. So the extra points no good. 10:02 left here in the first half. Your scores now: Harrison Central 13, Buckeye Trail zero. We'll take a timeout and be right back. All right, welcome back to Old Washington as Thomas is set to kick off, and he has been squibbing it, and the Huskies are going to continue to do that. As that is Lane Wable. Yeah, he took one for the team there. <laughs> that thing bounced high, and he had to grab and just squint. I mean, he was just, you could tell he was getting ready to get in. He took a wall up that time. Yeah, Wable's thinking, now wait a minute, the <laughs> first two kickoffs Harrison Central did, they were low, they were oh. able, 
feel them at the knees and just fall down. Yeah, he, he had to elevate for that and <laughs> did a good job hanging on to the football. Yeah, he caught it, and you could test that he's like, oh, no. And he did. He, they pretty much unloaded on him. So it'll, first down, Buckeye trail. Oh, Lane, what a great kid. So it will be first down in 10. Boy, look at the number of guys in the box. I think there was an offsides or a – Offsides against Harrison Central, yep. They were lined up offsides that time. And, Chris, I tell you, Harrison Central had ten guys within five yards yeah. of the line of scrimmage. They were, yeah, when Buckeye they Trail, were coming. When Buckeye Trail goes to that double tight end look and two wings, they got everybody. They got 11 guys at about three yards. So, they're, getting, they're coming to get you. So, it'll be first down and five here. And the Warriors still very much in this game, but they really need to get some points on the board here. Handoff goes to Egan. He breaks one tackle, two tackles. He's got the first down and then some to the 49-yard line. Yeah, man, and if he gets loose, there ain't anybody on that team going to catch that kid because one thing Cohen Egan has, man, he has raw speed. When he gets in the open field, you're not going to run him down. And, and I tell you, the power he's got – they, they hit him right at the line of scrimmage. I thought it was going to be a maybe a two-yard gain. Next thing you know, he's up the sideline and in the secondary. Yeah, he did a nice job bouncing off the first defender, not letting that first guy bring him down and continued on. Again, Husky stacking the line of scrimmage. Here's a handoff to Alloway. Nice kick-out block. And he's going to get to about the 40-yard line, and that should be another first down. Yeah, Buckeye Trail got contained again. Uh, Harrison Center, one, one danger when you stack everybody in there like that is, man, if you get to the outside, there's nobody out there. So uh, Buckeye Trails did a nice job of basically cutting the splits down, making the defense condense, and then exploiting the outside. Yeah, timeout Huskies will keep it here as McAfee. He's been very active from his safety position, and we'll hear from a few more of our sponsors. Okay, another sponsor tonight is Buck Robinson of Southeastern Equipment. Says go Warriors and call Buck at 740-260-4268 for any of your heavy equipment needs, whether it be parts, sales, or services. Again, old we have other sponsors here, and that's Old Washington Presbyterian Shirts, a proud sponsor of the Warriors. Mr. Lee's Family Restaurant. Looking for a family restaurant to tailgate at before the big game? Visit Mr. Lee's Family Restaurant on East Wheeling Avenue in Cambridge. Darcy A. Wakefield and Family Dentistry and Orthodontics. Want to show off a beautiful smile after a big Warrior win? Darcy Wakefield can take care of any dentistry or orthodontics needs that you have. Connor Push Carriage of, of Jacobs Vanenham Insurance Agency. Looking for an independent insurance agent to quarterback you through any coverage? Connor Push Carriage is your man. Call Connor at 740-610-3024 at Jacobs Vanenham Insurance Agency. All right, and again, we want to thank our uh, – Fine sponsors, Buckeye Trail with a nice drive, first and 10 at the 39. Perry with the carry, he will be hit low. And you, uh, that is McAfee again coming up from the secondary. Yeah, and that was again a good job by Harrison Central plugging those gap when you try to run inside. The problem with running inside because they got about eight guys in there and you just can't block them all. And uh, the defender did a nice job coming up and filling the gap. So it'll be second down and 10, and Buckeye Trail really almost uh, forced to be in fourth down, four down territory, excuse me, uh, down two scores. Man in motion is out of the way. He has it. He's got running room around the corner and gets a nice gain inside the 35 to about the 34. I think they're going to mark him a little bit short. He went out just before the 35 so it's going to be about third and seven on that and looks like he stepped out just a little early but Buckeye Trail again got the corner that time uh just wasn't able quite to get up the sideline they stretched out enough to get out of the way get, uh, they got him to go out of bounds yeah and that was a uh, Culberson on the tackle for the Huskies so now third down and six the ball at the 36 
Perry, the single back. Fumble. And I think Williams got it back as he was hit by Culberson. And Worsham. So now it's fourth down, and the Warriors dodged a bullet there. And looks like Buckeye Trail is going to go for it. They're on about the Harrison Central 36 and a half yard line. Uh, going to run a little bit of a well, they're going to that double tight look again. See what they do. So fourth and six. Williams throws it. It's intercepted by Hutton as the they were looking to get the ball to Hastings, and that play was well sniffed out. Parker Hutton on the interception. And that's Parker Hutton's second interception. This one not as uh Exciting as it, he caught it with two hands. His last one was the leaping one-handed interception. But Parker Hutton, defensively, two big uh, interceptions. Offensively, he's been quiet so far. Uh, Buck, uh, Harrison goes right back to the spread. Look, they got slots left, uh, uh, slots to the right, and running the big back. Buckeye Trail does a good job of getting a hand on him early, stepping him. Tripping him up and then finishing up with about a three-yard gain. The Charlie Perry, I think, was the yeah. first guy in there. Shot the gap and got an arm on him to trip him up. Perry uh, had ten tackles last week, and uh, Perry, one of the better, more active linebackers you will see in our area. That's Keto again. He's got running room, and he's going to get a first down as he gets stood up right at the sticks. Alloway in there. With a host of Warriors, uh, Connor, as well as uh, Travis uh, Dodd. It'll be first down for Harrison Central at right on the 50-yard line. So we're nearing the seven-minute mark here of the second quarter. And uh, that is going uh, to be Bo Rikas. So, Bo Rinkus with the tackle. Or with the carry, excuse me. So, coming up, second down and seven with the ball right inside Warrior territory. Again, this is Rinkus, and he is going to be dropped. And I tell you what, that was a great job. I really keyed on him, and that was Hunter Greathouse. He actually extended his arm, got the offensive line away from him, didn't really penetrate much, but as soon as that the running back got close to him, he discarded him, threw him to the side, and made the tackle. So a great job that time by Hunter Greathouse. Third down and five from the 45. Keto has it. Makes one man miss, and he's got the first down and then some as he will rumble down to about the Warrior 36-yard line. Alloway on the tackle for the Warriors. Yeah, it looks like Harrison has decided they're just going to run the ball here. So they've, they've spread it, but they're just running the ball. Blake Atkins in to carry the ball now, and he has hit. Was that Great House again? I think if that one was Connor or Wyatt That Connor. was Wyatt Connor, <laughs> he, he okay. Made the initial hit and really stuffed him up. And Wyatt, again, he's not the tallest guy in the world, but at about five foot eight and about 200 pounds, he carries a <laughs> load when he yeah. hits you. Yeah, and that was, that was Connor with the initial hit, and Great House also came in to uh, clean up. Here's a blitz by Hastings, and Atkins runs away from it. Good Looks like the ball's loose. Yeah, they fumbled it, but it looked like Harrison Central recovered it. Yep. Ball come flying out. And, and that's something the Warriors could really use a break. They need right a break. Right there, yeah. yeah. You you uh, create the fumble, yeah, they've done but nice, just unable to get it. They've done a nice job so far in this game just keeping it to a 13-point game. So this defense, hopefully they can hang on here. Yeah, they've made this high-power offense. It's a pass. Nickel and Diamond. Looking deep, and it's going to be incomplete, and uh, that's a tough break. They're going to call pass interference, and uh, Chris, that ball was 
well over everybody. Yeah, and that really didn't need to be done. A Buckeye trailed the defender, I think, and it was the Dodd boy just ran directly into the receiver, and all he had to do is turn and run, and there was no way they were going to catch it because that ball was way overthrown, but uh, it was pretty obvious that he had basically ran into him, so that call is going to be made every time. Yeah, I just they, they get running back looking for the ball and you make contact and McAfee also uh I don't know if he sold it a little as well. Yeah, but yeah. uh Yeah, that's just heads up play. Mi misfortunate for Buckeye Trail. He yeah. really had him in a tough spot too. Yeah, because that ball landed eight yards deep in the end zone. That's a tough break. But like you said, good call is uh Keto. He rumbles. He gets inside the 20. Again, a host of Warriors there. Yeah, and Buckeye Trail has really done a nice job kind of corralling him and keeping the four or five guys hanging on him whenever they can. So uh, they've done a pretty good job trying to trying to control him or contain him. Yeah, that was Travis Dodd, Charlie Perry leading the host of tacklers. And, boy, yeah, Buckeye Trail, they're getting a lot of helmets to the football. Yeah, I'll tell you, once he gets the ball, they got they got guys sprinting to the ball, and they've done a really nice job with that tonight. Second and six. Man coming in motion, but it'll be Keto. He's got running room to the outside, and he may take it in, and he does. The 225-pounder takes it in from 15 yards out yeah, and uh, showing some quickness getting outside containment. Yeah, they, he bounced it to the outside that time, and Buckeye Trail – wasn't able to contain and keep him, you know, corralled inside. And uh, he did a nice job of just running through a tackle and uh, making the play. So really nice job that time by, by Keto on bouncing that to the outside. And that is Keto's second uh, touchdown of the half. He had a six-yard touchdown run in the first quarter. And here a 15-yard run. And after this two-point conversion, we'll keep it here and uh, – Hear from some more of our fine sponsors, 19-0 Huskies. Hastings applying pressure. Cassidy throws it, had a man in the back of the end zone, but just sailed that pass a little high, intended for Vermillion. So 355 left here in the second quarter. It's now Harrison Central 19, Buckeye Trail 0. And uh, Chris, let's hear from some more of our sponsors. Uh, some other sponsors we have tonight are Bicon Services and Engineering. Wishing the Warriors and all of our area teams a very successful season. Deep Cut Tavern, looking for a place to celebrate after a big Warrior win? Come see Deep Cut Tavern and celebrate with friends and family. Marathon Stations, fuel up before every local area football game at Marathon Stations, located in Old Washington and Cambridge. Some other sponsors we have tonight are also Stop 9 Church of Christ cheering for all our local student athletes. We also have Dennis Doubt. He says, Go Warriors. Bears Den Steakhouse. Stop by the Bears Den Steakhouse located on Route 40 for the best steaks around. And we want to thank our sponsors tonight for uh, allowing us to bring you this here tonight. Uh, great night for high school football and here we go, 3.55 left in the first half. And there's a the little squib kick. Wable gets it and fields it like a shortstop. Yeah, he did a really nice job that time. He made sure he had both knees on the ground. Uh, he was sliding, so he had his head up thinking, I'm not going to get walloped like I did the last time. But, Chris, you know, we gave the Warrior coaching staff for seeing something when they got the first downs with the quarterback sneaks. Uh, credit Harrison Central. You know, they know what Cohen Egan did last year uh, at Harrison Central, and they know what he did last week, returning a kickoff 90 yards, and another one, he returned about 55 yards over midfield, so they're not going to let him touch the football. Cohen Egan gets it outside and, and gets to about the 44-yard line. Yeah, they got him on the outside that time. He got about seven, about five yards or so, maybe six yards on a quick pass to the outside. And that's another way. That's just like basically running a uh, 
a pitch play to the outside and get Negan the ball in some space. And again, McAfee with the tackle. And hey, how about the sophomore, Sammy Brown? He got a nice uh, kick out block there to uh, give Egan some running room. Gain of four. Perry takes it, runs around the short side, and still's got running room over midfield to about the 40. Six-yard line of Harrison Central. That will be a first down. Really nice run by Charlie Perry. Again, broke that initial tack on was to get uh, and kept on trucking down the sidelines. Charlie Perry, about about 6'4 and about 195 pounds. Uh, he brings quite a load, too. Yeah, and that was a gain of about 11. So, again, Warriors getting the, uh, the ball across midfield, but They've got to get points here. This is Alloway, and he's going to be dropped in the backfield. And that's Nico Worsham, the sophomore middle linebacker for the Huskies. Yeah, and I think that there was a there was a snap issue that time, and it kind of threw the timing off of the play, uh, kind of delayed it a little bit. And when you're running those jet sweeps like that, if you're not getting the ball at the right time, it slows you down and pretty much ruins the play because you're really trying to get that corner, and Buckeye Trail wasn't able to do it that time. And, Chris, if Worsham doesn't make that shoestring tackle from behind, it looked like the Warrior line had the outside sealed again. Williams throwing. He's got Hastings, and Hastings will get to about the 40. And he'll be about four yards short. Yeah, nice that, throw. That was a real nice throw that time by Braden Williams. They just ran down, ran about a 15-yard curl route, and uh, Brady come back to play. It made a really nice catch as the ball was above your head. And if you know, if you got shoulder pads on and you're trying to catch a ball directly above your head, it's not easy to do. So a really nice catch that time by Brady Hastings. And, Chris, you know as a quarterback, you love those 6'4 receivers. You've got a lot more room for error, and they're once again a quarterback sneak. Yeah, Buckeye Trail had five yards to go. They got about two yards on that, so they're just trying to get this close. Uh, give them some uh, options here on this last, well, on this fourth down play. So fourth and about two yards with about a minute 18 to go. Yeah, so the Warriors will take a timeout. Uh, think about it. Let's hear from uh, some more of our uh, sponsors. All right, some other sponsors we have is 360 Burger, serving farm to table burgers and local ingredients to all football fans in our area. Southeastern Equipment. If you need heavy equipment, we're the place to go. Yes, call up Buck Ro uh, Robinson. And uh, yep. And how about uh, Buck talking about one of the great uh, warrior legends? Yeah, Boy, he, was he a load. Yeah, he was a load in high school. He was about 6'3", about 235 pounds, and went on to play collegiately at the University of Kentucky and had a good yeah. career there. In the SEC. In the I tell SEC. You. Uh, uh, I got it's it. not the Big Ten, but it is, it's, it's the SEC. <laughs> I will agree with you there. You can take that either way. But I, I had a chance, uh, privilege to visit with uh, uh, Buck today on the phone talking to him. And uh, we uh, was uh, talking some uh, football. And I'll tell you what, we were talking about, uh, Chris, if you've got Netflix, you need to uh, watch Swamp Kings. Yeah. When Urban Meyer was at Florida. Wow. <laughs> I watched episode one last night. There's only four, and we were talking about that. That is amazing. So I'm sure a lot of Buckeye fans with Urban Meyer's connection there will want to watch that as Egan gets dropped. And uh, the Huskies with the run blitz, and they will get the ball back. And uh, Egan had no chance there. Yeah, he had uh, – as soon as he got that, he got walloped. He had two guys that nailed him in the backfield, so Buckeye Trail didn't really even have a chance that time. And, and Chris, the Warriors, fourth and two, you want to get it to your playmaker. They did, and Harrison Central, give them credit. They were – They keyed they, on They him. keyed on them yeah, and uh, made the play there. So uh, – A minute 15, so we can see. Hopefully Buckeye Trail can get this till the half and uh, not give up a score here. I'm sure Harrison's going to spread it out. Yeah, and, uh, probably throw this thing. And oh, they will. And Chris, remember, Harrison Central will receive the kickoff to start the second half. Cassidy going long, looking. Boy, does he got an arm that pass intended for Flew Hardy? 
Yeah, and he had a step on Egan too. And I mean, uh, he he actually he just off the fingertips, probably about a yard too long, or they would have had a big reception that time. So I tell you, boy, uh, some big receivers for uh, Harrison Central. They got Vermillion at 6'6", Flu Hardy at 6'4". And Keto with the reception. And he's going to get close to the first down. And that was Cohen Egan on the collision there. Yeah, they did a nice job corralling him on the outside. One, one defender took the inside, the other defender took the outside, made the play, and that's what you got to do on those, really, those when you spread the field, they're trying to create space. You just got to corral them. Keto needs two yards, and he's not going to get it. Well, I think he fell forward right at the end, and they're going to give him forward progress. It's going to be really close. Yeah, see, I thought they when they blew the whistle, yeah. they had stood him up. So he's going to be short. They're going to go quick, 45 seconds. The Huskies do have two timeouts. Keto's going to get the first down. And he's going to get out of bounds to stop the clock to about the 36. Perry on the tackle for the Warriors. I mean, Keto has been able to pop a couple of them outside the tackle. Yeah, with 35 seconds to go, let's see if Buckeye Trail can hold here. Huskies two timeouts. Remember the clock stops on the first down. There's the throw, and that's Vermillion, I believe. Yeah, it's 6'4", about, looks like he's closer to 200 pounds on <laughs> So he's going against Blake Wable at about five foot 10 and about 155 pounds soaking wet, so. So now, first and 10, the ball at the 36. There's the same play. And Vermillion is going to get knocked out of bounds inside the 20. And Blake Wable went low that time. I think he tackled him high last time and decided he's not going to do that again and did a nice job of wrapping him up low. So the Huskies continue to go quick. 22 seconds left. All day to throw the ball over the middle. He's got a man, but just sailed it over the head of McAfee. Yeah, he had him wide open right on the goal line and just threw it over his head. Buckeye Trail kind of left him open. So, looks like some of the Buckeye Trail defense alignment are gassed, too. Oh, and they should be. Yeah. And, and, Chris, the thing there, that pass right there, McAfee, outstanding receiver, he's 5'9". The guy who caught the last two passes is six six. Right, he probably would have made so, that play. Yeah, so they may have come. They may come right back with that. But boy, Hastings again, great jump off the line, and that ball goes. Will go to uh, Vermillion. Yeah, they're just run, They're taking that quick out, and just working it down the field to get it close. They got thirteen seconds and about what, uh, fourteen yards to go. So. They're just chipping away, taking what Buckeye Trail is going to give them. Yeah, and remember the Huskies, they have two timeouts. I think they're going to uh, take one here. And, Chris, you're right. Uh, the trail defense, they have got to be uh, gassed. Yeah, their defensive linemen have been rushing the whole time. A couple of them barely got off the line, line of scrimmage last time. They are, they are definitely sucking some wind right now. Yeah, but I, I tell you why, I continue to be amazed – by the get off Brady Hastings has rushing from his uh, left defensive end. He's yeah, when that when they go three defensive linemen, Brady's that other that lineman or that linebacker, or the hybrid guy that kind of steps back. And then when they want really want some pass rush, they step him up. And man, he's really put pressure on the passer today because Brady's six three, probably a little bit slightly over two hundred pounds, but is a really good athlete, a strong athlete, and has a very quick first step and has really done a nice job putting pressure on the passer. So back, out come the Huskies. Thanks for joining us here on Caleb Graham Productions. I'm merely Tom Strasser, joined by the BT Hall of Famer Chris Starr and James Huggins, producing 
our broadcast tonight. So now first and 10, but only 13 seconds left. Swing pass to Keto, and he is going to be drug out of bounds with only five seconds left. Nice job by Brady Hastings. Yeah, Brady Hastings was on that defensive end, read that right away. They were just trying to run a swing to get around him, and Brady recovered and ran him down and ran him out of bounds. So really nice job. They got five seconds. What do you think the chances are, Tommy, that they throw the ball to the end zone? They, they will throw it to the end zone. <laughs> and, and the, I'd say that's probably a 100% yeah, chance. And, 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 Chris, we'll keep it here. That little swing pass to Keto, I almost wondered if he was, was going to maybe throw the ball since he caught it behind. But Brady not only making the tackle, but that took eight seconds off the clock. Right, yeah. That was a big play. And, uh, they real, and uh, I think they lost two yards. They would have been better off to just drop that pass. <laughs> you know, sometimes you're better off just not, not to make that play. But Brady, again, Brady Hastings has really played well defensively for Buckeye Trail in this first half. Has really made some nice plays for him. But I just wonder if uh, Keto wasn't maybe going to uh, attempt to throw the football, but he had uh, no chance. So uh, – Second down and 10, but only five seconds left. And really, time for one play. And remember, at uh, halftime, you'll be able to enjoy the Harrison Central Husky marching band and then the Buckeye Trail marching band. 60 strong, Chris, under the direction of Doug Hanna. Second and 10. That way, and here's a... Did the Warriors a false start? A false start? Looked like a false start against Harrison Central. So, Buckeye Trail got a good look at what they're trying to do there. Looks like they're running two guys deep down the middle and going to drag some guys underneath. So, Buckeye Trail, will be good. they're going to get uh, Cohen Egan in there defensively too with a guy who's really got some speed. And uh, the Huskies will – they'll go ahead and uh, take their – last uh, time out. And uh, Chris, you want to give a shout out to our sponsors one last time here in the first half. Yeah, our sponsors tonight are Stop 9 Church of Christ, 360 Burger, Southeastern Equipment, Bears Den Steakhouse, Dennis Doubt, Southeastern Ohio Counseling Center, LLC, Old Washington, Old Washington Presbyterian Church, Mr. Lee's Family Restaurant, Darcy A. Wakefield, Family Dentistry and Orthodontics, Scott Ogle Realty, Connor Push Carriage of Jacobs Vanenham Insurance Agency, Bicon Services and Engineering, Deep Cut Tavern, and last but not least is Marathon Stations. And we thank our sponsors again. We thank you so much for allowing us to bring you this uh, broadcast tonight. So this will be the last play of the first half. Five seconds left. And my Nostradamus is predicting a pass to the end zone. Let's see if Chris Starr is right. Cassidy looking, looking. Cassidy He's throwing it deep, receiver. and it is intercepted by Cohen Egan. Yeah, and Cohen kept inside contained that time, really did a nice job, went up and made the play. So outstanding job that time by Cohen Egan. Buckeye Trail held. They're down 19, but again, uh, did actually played pretty well because Harrison Central is probably going to be a playoff team, and uh, Buckeye Trail's hung tough in there. Yeah, and that pass was intended for uh, Clayton Vermillion, the 6'6 senior, and uh, nice job, Egan, uh, really uh, block, uh, boxing him out like you do on the basketball floor, and then he can elevate. Uh, Cohen Egan, he can uh, – Get up above the rim. We have seen him do that. Somebody said he plays basketball. Yeah. Oh, and he does very well. <laughs> yes, he does. So that ends an exciting first half of action here from Old Washington. Your score at the half, it's Harrison Central 19, Buckeye Trail 0. We are going to step aside and give you an opportunity to listen to both bands from Harrison Central and Buckeye Trail, and then we will be back with some halftime scores and get you set 
for second half action here from Ode Washington. And now, announcing the pride of the Huskies, the Harrison Central High School Marching Band, under the direction of Angela and Eric Zelensky with percussion instructor Bill Cashuller and flag instructor Chelsea Bethel. The 2023 Husky Marching Band is led onto the field by Field Commander Riley Smith. Tonight, our playlist includes Blinding Lights by The Weeknd, Glad You Came by The Wanted, Tongue Tied by Group Love, and Natural by Imagine Dragons with soloist Aiden Pettit. Sit back and enjoy the show.
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the field. The pride of Eastern Guernsey County. The Warrior Marching Band. The Warrior Marching Band is under the direction of Mr. Doug Hanna, Assistant Band Director Stacy Randwick, and Color Guard Instructor Brenda Shepard.
The band's first performance is a 1957 popular song recorded by American rock and roll musician Jerry Lee Lewis. This recording was ranked as the 96th greatest song ever. Here is Great Balls of Fire. Our next performance was initially released in 1954 by Bill Haley and his comments. It was the seismic event that kicked off the rock revolution. Here is Rock Around the Clock. Before our last performance, we would like to do a shout out to all alumni band members. Next Friday is an alumni night and we would love for you to join us. Meet in the band room next Friday from 4 to 5 to rehearse before the game. Our final performance was a U.S. number one hit in 1961 by Percy Mayfield and Ray Charles. This became one of Ray's signature songs. Here is Hit the Road, Jack, featuring Carter Carpenter on the trombone.
What an exhilarating performance by both bands. And as you're listening to the 60 Strong, under the direction of Doug Hanna, the Buckeye Trail Marching Band, and uh, they're getting a rousing rendition as both teams have uh, come out of the locker room where they will uh, put the usual three minutes up to let both teams warm up. We'll give you the individual scoring here at the half, 19-0 Huskies with 7.41 left in the opening quarter. Harrison Central off a fumble would drive down and cap off a Michael Quito six-yard touchdown run. Quito's extra point was good, and Harrison Central would take that 7-0 lead into the second quarter where with 10-02 left, Blake Atkins would uh, break it off the left end and uh, take it in from 10 yards out, a 10-yard touchdown run. Quito's extra point was blocked by Brady Hastings, and that made the score 13 nothing. And then with 3.55 left in the half, Harrison Central would again drive down, and it would be Michael Quito take, breaking it off the left side and taking it in from 15 yards out. The two-point conversion was no good, and Harrison Central would drive down again and get down to about the 15-yard line, but the Warriors would uh, – hold strong and would finish it off on the last play of the first half, a Cohen Egan interception in the end zone. So it's 19 to zero here. And uh, at the half, we'll uh, look at the 740 Sports All Access Scoreboard. Scores from around the area are of note. Ridgewood leads Riverview 43 to zero. John Glenn 28, Cambridge seven. Steubenville, 22, New Philly, 6. St. Clairsville leads at the half over Martins Ferry, 41-0. Indian Valley at home leads Meadowbrook late in the second quarter, 40-8. Newcomerstown up on Bellsville, 20-0. Malvern at halftime leads Connaughton Valley, 13-0. Caldwell uh, leads Waterford, 28-6. Union Local leads Buckeye Local 42-7. Fort Fry, the Cadets, pitching a shutout over Belpre 48-0. Monroe Central leads Bridgeport 36-0. And Shenandoah leads Shadyside 19-6. And Buckeye Trail's opponent next week, Barnesville, the Shamrocks, they travel to Bel Air tomorrow uh, at noon, remember Bel Air, one of the few schools, they don't have lights, so they play all their home games uh, under the sunny skies on uh, Saturday afternoon. So, Barnesville and Buckeye Trail next week. And, uh, Chris, uh, Buckeye Trail, a lot of positives in the first half. Uh, down some uh, the three offensive linemen and losing uh, Travis Dodd on the offensive side. They've gone toe-to-toe, -to -toe, but uh, just methodically, Harrison Central has been able to put a couple of big drives together, and that's why they're up 19 at the half. Yeah, Buckeye Trail actually had moved the ball at times, threw the ball pretty well at times, had a, uh, had a couple that were picked off, but actually uh, with three offensive linemen out, actually kind of held their own in the first half. And uh, really defensively, they were on the field quite a bit. Did a nice job defensively against this talented Harrison Central offense. So Buckeye Trail kind of held their own 19 to nothing. Doesn't look that great, but actually Buckeye Trail has played pretty well. Yeah, and, and good call, Chris. Buckeye Trail with three turnovers in the first half. Harrison Central uh, with two and both interceptions by Jackson Hess and then the big one in the end zone by Cohen Egan. So uh, five turnovers combined, and uh, we'll see what the Warriors can do as they will be kicking off here, and it will be Charlie Perry with the ball at the 40. McAfee back, and there's an onside kick. And the Huskies, that was a pretty good onside kick, but it will be recovered by the Huskies. Yeah, number 77, Keaton McConnell for uh, 
a, a sophomore for Harrison Central recovered it, and that was actually kind of that was a pretty tough recovery, and he did a yeah. nice job with that. Yeah, that was in the. Chris, even though the Warriors did not get it, I love the call there. You know, they're trying to make a play to really get back and uh, get some momentum on their side. And uh, credit the Huskies, they're recovering a tough onside kick. Keto in the backfield with Hayden Cassidy. So Cassidy pistol formation, ball at the... Husky 47, Keto finds running room on the left side, and he gets over midfield to about the 49. Yeah, he's tackled by Charlie Perry and Cone. He even come up and cleaned it up. So, again, keeping him in check, the big back. They've done a pretty good job. Good night. Keto at 41 to 40 yard line. Yeah, Cohen Egan had the initial hit that time, wasn't able to wrap him up. He bounced to the outside and was able to get that first down. And then, Chris, again, Buckeye Trail, they have limited the big explosive plays that plagued them last year in their loss against the Huskies and what plagued Claymont last week. Again, not. And that was uh, Rankis, I believe. Number six, yeah. Nice tackle by Perry. Lost the yard, second down. Yes, uh, Rankis. And like you said, you really, uh, you, you really like uh, this young sophomore. Yeah, he runs hard. I'm just impressed talking to your uh, sources in Harrison County and getting a scouting report on them. That, that did not go unnoticed. Here's McAfee. He loses his feet, and he's going to be dropped there by Mason Todd. Yeah, I think that might have been a holding call that time again against Harrison Central. So, yeah, they did a good job of corralling him, making the tackle. Buckeye Trails kind of held their own on those outside screen they have, plays. Yes. They've done a pretty good job of containing the receiver, maintaining, maintaining uh, contained not only on the inside but the outside and cleaning it up late. So Buckeye Trails have done a pretty good job with that. So there's a holding call. And the Warriors are going. So the Warriors can take the penalty and make it first and 20 or second and 11. And it looks like the Warriors are going. No, I think he's. I think they want to pointing take. that they want to take the penalty. They definitely, they want to take the penalty. They are going to take. Yeah, that's why they're going to back him up, and it will be what second down and about. Second down. And twenty. Why would you decline the penalty? I mean. That doesn't make any sense at all. So it'll be second down and 20. Cassidy under pressure throws. It's caught at about the 39 coming back. Yeah, about a 10 yard. He made it. That's a really nice pass on the outside. Put it low where he's only his receiver could catch it. And the receiver uh, did a nice job of catching that too. Low to the ground and then put it away. So really nice job by Harrison Central. And, and Chris, not only did Vermillion work back to his quarterback, but like you said, he caught it low and at 6'6". That's not an easy catch. Cassidy rolling out, throws it. It is incomplete. What a hit, and they are going to throw a flag. What's the flag for? I don't know. Coach Kearns is on the sideline. Coach Perry, the defensive coordinator, is upset, and Coach Kearns is livid. It looked like uh, Egan got there right when the football did. I don't know. What do they call on the pass? What's the what's the penalty on? Yeah, that was a that was a really good defensive play. They look like they're talking it over. So yeah, they're still. I'm not sure what what they could have called on that. I thought maybe the penalty now, was later somewhere yeah, else. 
that, Chris, they've got an emphasis this year, and they called one against Caldwell late in the game against the Warriors. If you come in and uh, they deem you leading with your helmet, but I didn't see that. But I that that has to be what uh, what the call is in Kearns. Coach Donnie Kearns is livid. I mean, that was just a great football hit. Be first and I, I don't, yeah, I don't understand that. No. I'm all for protecting the kids. I, I don't understand that one right there. That's a terrible call. I mean, we can say what we want, but that's just an absolutely terrible call that time by the official. I have no idea what they come up with there, but that was a really poor call. And the bad part is uh, the exactly. defender for Buckeye sure. Trail made a really nice play on it, and then you get penalized for making second a down. good play. Second so down. you just hate to see that. Reception. So second down and three after the completion. And uh, down here inside the 20, this is where they have been feeding Michael Quito the majority of the night. And on cue, they're going to give the man in, and he's going to rumble for a first down to about the nine-yard line, and Coach Kearns is still voicing his displeasure over that call. So 8.40 left. They're going to continue to pound it inside to Keto on Buckeye Trail with a host of guys. Charlie Perry's there. And Mason Todd. And Mason Todd's in there, okay? They had a bunch of guys making the play that time. So Buckeye Trail hanging tough here. And, Chris, Mike, uh, Mason Todd, only a sophomore and not real big, but, man, does he play one of the inside linebacker spots. He is all over the place. He plays with a little attitude, though. He is a, He's not the biggest kid, but, man, he's a tough kid. So it'll be second and nine. There's a little wide receiver screen and getting the ball inside about the two-yard line. Parker Hutton on the... Swing pass is going to come up one yard short. Right and I'm trying down. to see, did you see who? Mason Todd, and I think the other one was, uh, I think the other person was Sammy Brown on oh. that last play. Okay, touchdown. and that was uh, Parker Hutton on the catch, and that's going to be Michael Keto here taking the ball in. So 7.29 left, and Michael Keto with his third touchdown run. And that will make the score 25 to nothing. And Keto's extra point is up, and it's good. So Keto with his third touchdown rush of the game and uh, Chris uh, will uh, keep it here and uh, hear from our uh, sponsors. Okay, uh, one of our sponsors tonight is Southeastern Ohio Counseling Center, LLC. Experience, experience the caring support you deserve with Southeastern Ohio Counseling Center, your trusted partner for comprehensive mental health and addiction services. With their main office in Old Washington and an additional office in Marietta, they're easily accessible to assist you serving children, adolescents, and adults right here uh, for your needs be it at home or in the community or at school. As we cheer on the players this season, remember that mental health matters. Good luck and go Warriors. We thank you again to Southeastern Ohio Counseling Center, LLC. All right, and Thomas will kick it off. There's a squib kick that gets all the way back by Todd about the 18-yard line. He turns it up to 
near the 25 yard line and that may be a face mask penalty there. So Michael Keto tonight, six yard touchdown run, 15 yard touchdown run, one yard touchdown run. <clears throat> and that uh, has helped. Pace yeah, that was one the of the, that was one of the squibs that got through. Yeah, I think it went through the wickets of a couple of Buckeye Trail <laughs> players, and then uh, the Todd boy picked it up and tried to make something of it, and actually did a did a nice job breaking a few tackles and got to the outside. Yeah, it's a face mask. Oh, and that personal foul penalty against the Warriors going to return. Those penalties. So the penalties offset. offset. First down, Buckeye Trail. So are they going to have them? They're going to make them re-kick it. Apparently so. This could only this is be this is probably good for Buckeye Trail though because they were kind of pinned deep. So that kind of that definitely was in favor for Buckeye Trail. I'll tell you, a nice crowd. Yeah, there's a nice here crowd for the here home tonight. opener. Harrison Central brought a nice crowd. Buckeye Trail has a nice crowd here tonight. And great atmosphere, great weather, so you can't ask for more than that. So kicking off from the 40. There's a squib kick. Wow, what a nice kicking. Getting it at about the 24-yard line. Now, Chris, if if there would not not have been any flags, that's about where the Warriors would have got the ball to begin with. So yeah. Buckeye Trail probably should have let that go. Probably would have rolled out of bounds. But, but I don't know. Don't, I, it didn't look, I don't know a, if it was the, going out. It's one of those weird rolls where you just don't know because it was kind of rolling like just over and over, not in for in. And, uh, if you let it go, you gotta you gotta field it because if they get it, you know it's it's their ball. So that was a tough play for Buckeye Trail. Yeah, I think uh, Mason Todd definitely did the right thing. There's a handoff to Perry. He cuts it up, and he is the ball comes loose, but he's going to be marked down, and that's close to a first down. So they're going to mark him about a yard short. Yeah, Charlie Perry took one, I think, a pretty good shot on the knee that time. He's coming out. And uh, well, I tell you, that ball, that play was designed to go uh, outside. to the outside. And, boy, did he plant yeah, yeah. and uh, cut it up. That was yeah, a nice big, run. Big hole opened up on the inside, and Charlie turned it up. So, Williams, a little swing pass to Egan. He makes one man miss. Two men miss. He's still up 40, 45 yard line. And that's all Cohen Egan right there. Wow. Yeah, it looks like a Harrison Central guy is cramping on the sidelines down here. And I can't quite see who it is. But yeah, it was number 22, their cornerback over there, I think. McAfee. McAfee started to cramp up just a little bit. Early in the season, that's a major issue, especially the first game. Usually the second game, not so bad, but usually. Once you get to the second game, it's not as big as issue, but still on a humid night, even though it's not as warm as we thought, you sweat a bunch, you lose that water, next thing you know, you start cramping up. And, and Chris McAfee from his safety position, he has been all over the field tonight. Yeah, he's done a nice job defensively for Harrison Central. So that's a first down after the reception to Egan. This is going to be Todd. Trying to turn the corner, and he's coming all the way back. It's a nice kickback block. 45, 50, 40, 30, 20, 15 yard line. And no flags down, so nice job. I was about to say, man, that was a poor decision because it looked like he was going to lose about 10, and he was able to turn the corner the other way. So, again, Mason Todd made a really nice play that time. They are going to mark him at the 17. That's about a 36-yard run 
And as ran, far as in the stats, but how far did he actually run? He ran about 80 yards. Oh, <laughs> at least 80 yards. Maybe even more because he was back near his own 30. Handoff up the middle to Perry. Inside handoff, Charlie Perry. Tackled by Nico Worsham. Worsham, the middle linebacker on the tackle for the Huskies. And Chris, did did uh, Todd on that electrifying run, did he not get a couple of kickback blocks? Yeah. They, uh, they were they were nice. They did a nice job of not making it really obvious yeah. where you could get a penalty. Yeah, so. uh, they did. They just kind of screened them and sealed them. And uh, it was. Credit the other guys for staying with it. Williams dropping back, going to the end zone. And this one's going to be nearly intercepted. Yeah, he's got to lead that to the outside and give his receiver. He just left it short, and his receiver couldn't even wasn't able to even come back and get it. So he yeah, the, left it way too short. Just didn't wasn't a good throw that time. The, the pass intended for uh, Lane Wable, and that was Xander Stabil, a sophomore, that uh, actually had a chance to intercept the ball and credit Lane Wable. He turned defensive player there to knock the ball out of his hands. So it's going to be third down and 10. And wow, what a hit there. You want to guess who? Number 22 again. McAfee, yes. McAfee made a nice play again. Buckeye Trail is going to be fourth and 10. So see what they do here. Chris, we... We're going to have a chance to cover a lot of quality football teams. I do not know if we will see a better safety than Cam McAfee. Wow. Yeah, he's played well for him tonight. So this is fourth down and 10. Williams throwing it out, and it is intercepted. Has been intercepted by the Huskies. Yeah, I'm and not, I'm can not you sure. you see? Uh, I think the, number one. Number okay, one. Hayden Cassidy, the yeah. quarterback. I think he's he's the one that made the interception. And I'm not sure that pass was thrown where it needed to go. It looked like I'm not sure who the receiver even was on that one. Could you tell if there was anybody around I, it? I couldn't see who the receiver was. Yeah. But in the Williams uh, defense, it's fourth down and ten. You've got to you got uh, rolling out under pressure. You got to throw the football and give yeah, your you got to give guy a chance, chance to make a play. And Cassidy made that one. So yeah. and what Buckeye Trail is trying to roll to the right there, and he's a left hander. And and really, when you roll out, those offensive linemen have got to make the defensive person run to their inside shoulder. If they're going to get through, they got to get in through that inside shoulder. And Buckeye Trail wasn't able to do that. And uh, the Williams boy, the quarterback, got pressure right away and really just just kind of threw it up to give the, give the guy a chance. Got picked off, but that's really all he could do with that. Yeah, that was Cohen Egan who was a little slow getting up, but he's – looks like he's going to stay in and look to be okay. And uh, He's hobbled. It, I think he's coming out. He's Yeah, he is coming out, yes. And uh, Coach Kearns – I don't think he minded going clear over to that side of the field. The number one, check on your uh, outstanding player, and number two, Talk being the year of the official who uh, threw the flag on the last possession. So Cassidy throws it out to Vermillion, who loses his footing. Again, Brady Hastings yeah. applying pressure. Yeah, he didn't get touched that time. He got through it in a hurry and put pressure on the quarterback, and – they completed it, but it was basically he just kind of threw that up and the receiver was able to come down with it. So nearing the four-minute mark here in the third quarter. And I tell you, the uh, Huskies, they're kind of letting a little air out of the football, ain't they? Yeah, they're throwing I think they're working on some things. Yeah, and I'm, I mean, they're running the play clock down to eight, and there's a gaping hole. And that will be Atkins. Yeah, that's number 21. I think that's the young running back they, they really thought a lot of for Harrison Central. Uh, Blake Atkins, he's a junior, 5'11", 195. Man, he's really – seems like when he gets the ball, he's really got some pop going through there. 
Yeah, and that was a gain of 16 by Atkins. And this Warrior defense, they have to be uh, gas. They've been on the field a lot. And that's Atkins. That's going to be Mason Todd Atkins on the tackle. And Wyatt Tank on the tackle. So nearing the three-minute mark, Wyatt Tank. That was him making his first appearance uh, tonight. He's been out injured. And Cassidy gets hit. And how did he hang on to the football as Brady Hastings in pursuit runs him down? So a big run by Cassidy over midfield to the 46. And Chris, that's one of the plays you put on film and show your teammates Hastings yeah. rushed the quarterback, didn't give up. Flushed and him. And yeah. then runs around 20 yards downfield and makes the tackle. Yeah, he actually flushed him out and the quarterback went up the middle and he he come from probably eight yards deep in behind the quarterback and ran him down and actually put a pretty good lick on him too. So. Brady Hastings, again, has made a, a few really nice plays for Buckeye Trail tonight. And that was Nico Worsham on his first carry. And he gets nine. And Worsham looks to break it out. There's a flag down. He will have the first down as he he gets stood up by Charlie Perry. Yeah, Charlie Perry, he was kind of bouncing around. Charlie Perry read up, really come up and put a hit on him that time. And uh, That's in the area him, of holding. It stopped him in a hurry. Yeah, I think that will be a holding against Harrison. Chris, we have had some hits tonight, yeah. I tell you. We've, we've had some uh, solid uh, tackles, so that's going to back it up from second and one. It's going to make it about second and back to second and ten. So. so the holding occurred one yard past the line of scrimmage, so second and ten. Cassidy looking. And that's Hutton, I believe, that gets it out at the 38-yard line. Parker Hutton on the reception, Sammy Brown on the coverage. And Sammy Brown on the tackle. So a gain of six. And Cassidy may go right back to that same play. No, he's going to hand it off. And that's first down. Run to the 29, a gain of 10. And that was number six, the Rinkus, 10, a sophomore, 5'10", 160 pounds, and he was brought down by Mr. Dodd for Buckeye Trail. Come up and made a nice tackle that time. And there's a flag, and I think they're going to have another holding call. Harrison Central lineman, they must have some sticky fingers. <laughs> It's amazing how offensive line play has changed. When I played, you weren't allowed even to extend your arms. If you did, they called it holding. And now you're able to do that. The only thing is a lot of, a lot of guys get a tendency to grab a hold of you. And then they brought the face mask into football the year after yeah. you played. So here's a long throw, well covered, and going up and nearly making the catch at the 10-yard line, I think was uh, McAfee. And yeah. he, he was double teamed. Was that Sammy? Sammy Brown on the coverage that time. He was there, did a nice job of breaking it up. And, and McAfee made a nice play on the ball, almost caught that with two guys hanging on him. And I love how Cassidy, he'll throw it deep and give his playmakers a chance uh, to go up and make a play. And I love the fact that after that play, Sammy Brown went over and helped the Harrison Center boy get up. Too. Yeah. I mean, that's good sportsmanship. Yes, it is. So it's fourth and ten. Here's an interception by the aforementioned Sammy Brown. At the 45, so the Warriors defense comes up with a turnover. Yeah, that was a pass a little bit high on that, that quick screen to the outside, and the ball flew up straight up in the air. And Sammy Brown 
made it count and brought it down. So nice job by Sammy Brown. Yeah, and Cassidy, he had some mustard on that fastball. It looked like that was Vermillion he was trying to hit. It was Vermillion or Flu Hardy. I think it was Vermillion. Look at Trails going back to that spread look. So rolling to his left, Williams throws it. Pass a little low intended for Hastings. Yeah, and that one we had two receivers. One, the one, the ball went right through the, the underneath receiver's hands, and the other one, and Brady was there, probably would have caught it, but the ball was tipped, kind of threw the timing of it off, and, and that's tough. To, that's a really tough job to catch that tip pass. But, again, they had two guys open. They just didn't get it completed. So it'll be second down and 10. One eleven left here in the third. Only score of the quarter was Harrison Central. A Michael Quito, one-yard touchdown run. Williams under pressure. He's going to be sacked and fumbled. But I believe the Warriors are going to jump on it. And I believe that was Bucky Johnson who recovered it. And uh, how about uh, Bucky Johnson, only a freshman, and due to the injuries on the line, having to uh, step in and play guard, and he's actually hasn't done too bad yeah. of a job. No, he's done a pretty good job overall. But really, a, a Buckeye Trail's offensive line has kind of held their own. You think you got three starters out at, yes. at, at this level. I mean, it's hard. You're plugging holes a lot of times just with who you have, and then to have three guys out, man, that makes it tough. There's Perry. He is going to be short of the first down, but he'll make it fourth down and one, and McAfee on yet another tackle. Yeah, he's been all over the place tonight. i tell you what, if, there's, if we're picking a guy tonight to see yeah. all-star tonight, yeah. it's got to be him because he's made plays everywhere. And I like that he took – Perry's uh, legs out right there. Perry jumped up and then patted him on the helmet. Yeah. Miss McAfee, he has got to be in on at least 15 tackles yet so far. And uh, Chris, while we've got a timeout here, fourth and or end of the quarter, uh, we'll keep it here and hear from some of our sponsors. All right. A uh, sponsor we got tonight again is Scott Ogle Realty, proud supporter, so proudly supports all Warrior student athletes and the FCA. Now call us when you're ready to talk real estate. Buck Robinson at Southeastern Equipment says go Warriors and call Buck at 740-260-4268 for any of your heavy equipment needs, whether it be parts, sales, or services. And I tell you what, that John Robinson, he knows heavy equipment. <laughs> He's been moving around his whole life. Just moving that body around is some serious heavy equipment. <laughs> and uh, you out there listening, that athletics. But one good thing about Buck Robinson, he's even a better person. Yes, he is. He is a fantastic, great dad, great husband. Great uh, family. Great family, just super, super individual. Hey, you, Chris, the Warriors are going to call timeout. It looked like. Williams went under center, and it may have been a quarterback sneak, and he seen that side load out. I'm thinking that may be the case, and we'll hear from uh, some more of our sponsors. Another sponsor tonight for us is Stop 9 Church of Christ, cheering on all our, our local student athletes. 360 Burger, serving farm-to-table burgers with local ingredients to all football fans in the area. The, Bear Den, uh, the Bears Den Steakhouse. Stop by the Bears Den Steakhouse located on Route 40 for the best steaks around. Dennis Doubt, and he says, go Warriors. And, again, we thank all of our sponsors tonight. We surely do appreciate it uh, and giving us the opportunity to bring this game here tonight. Yeah, so we're just underway here in the fourth quarter, 26-0. Harrison Central, thanks for joining us here on Caleb Graham Productions. Buckeye Trail had them stacked in there tight. They got a, a slot to the right trying to space them out a little bit. We'll see what they do here. Fourth and two. Williams hands off to Perry. And uh, he will lose yardage, so it'll be a uh, 
turnover on down. A few more of our sponsors. Okay, some other sponsors tonight are Old Washington and Presbyterian Church, a proud sponsor of the Warriors. Mr. Lee's Family Restaurant, looking for a family restaurant to tailgate at before the big game, visit Mr. Lee's Family Restaurant on East Wheeling Avenue in Cambridge. Darcy A. Wakefield, Family Dentistry and Orthodontics. Want to show off a beautiful smile after a big warrior win? Darcy Wakefield can take care of any dentistry or orthodontics needs that you have. All right, so first and 10. And a big hole up the middle. That is going to be the sophomore Rinkus. And he'll, he'll get nine yards. And was that Dodd on the tackle? Yeah, it was Dodd on the tackle. Come up, made a good. He's been, I tell you what, he's made a, quite a few tackles. Really, yeah. he's been a sure tackler for them all night long when they broke through the line. He is a good athlete. He's a, he's a tough athlete and really has done a nice job of making sure that that tackle's being made. Hey, Chris, Looks that, like we got another holding Yeah, call that nine-yard gain is going to be uh, negated. So, wow, I mean, that's uh, one thing the Huskies – and uh, their head coach, Anthony Hayes, he is not going to be happy with the rash of holding calls they have had here in the second half. Again, it's Rinkus, and he will get the ball to about the Husky 47-yard line. And getting off the pile there again, Charlie Perry and Wyatt Connor on the tackle. And they, those guys have been in a lot of tackles yes. tonight. So it'll be second down and 14, a gain of six by Rinkus. And again, Harrison Central, they're, they have, they're taking their air out of the football here a little bit, letting it run down in under 10 seconds before they snap it. And again, it's Rinkus. He breaks it to the outside and Lane Wable Contained it, come up and did a nice job. Corner, and he bounced it to the outside. That corner come up and sealed the outside, turned it in, gave up some yards, but didn't give up the big play. So really nice job that time by Lane Wable. Wable turned him back inside, and Jackson has helped Wable clean the tackle up. So now it's going to be third down and seven after a gain of about five. So the Buckeye Trail Lady Warriors volleyball team, they will play at Philo tomorrow. We want to wish Coach McVicker and the girls the best of luck. McAfee in that will come in motion. He'll get the ball, and is this an illegal procedure? They, no, they no, the Huskies, delay. Huskies delay. called a timeout. timeout, and we'll uh, uh, hear from our uh, sponsors here one more time. Okay, another sponsor we have tonight is Connor Push Carriage of Jacobs Vanenham Insurance Agency. Looking for an independent insurance agent to quarterback you through any coverage? Connor Push Carriage is your man. Call Connor at 740-610-3024 at Jacobs Vanenham Insurance Agency. Bicon Services and Engineering. Wishing the Warriors and all of our area teams a very successful season. Deep Cut Tavern, looking for a place to celebrate after a big Warrior win? Come to Deep Cut Tavern and celebrate with friends and family. Marathon Stations, fuel up before every local area football game at Marathon Stations, located in Old Washington and Cambridge. Again, we want to thank our sponsors tonight. Uh, to, allowing us, bless us with the opportunity to come out here and uh, uh, give you their can't make it, and it's nice that they can sit at home and watch these games. So it'll be third down and seven, 10 6 left here in the football game. Harrison Central on their way to a 2 and 0 start and, and breaking a couple of tackles and getting near the first down. I believe that was Atkins again. And on the tackle that time for Buckeye Trio was number number 53. And that is, that is a good 
That is, and I think he changed his number. He was 10 last year. Tyler Harrell? Nope, that's not nope, Tyler that's Harrell. that's not Tyler. It, that, but that, was Wyatt, that is Wyatt Tank. I'm pretty sure yeah, that's okay. Wyatt Tank that made the tackle. Yes. Along with number four for uh, the Huskies. And here, Keto will pick up the first down. And another tackle that time by Wyatt Tank. I think he's got an injured shoulder, and he's, been, he's about 50%. Yeah. He's still out there trying to get it done the best that he can. Yeah, Tank is senior, yeah, showing a lot of heart, wanting to uh, be out there with his teammates. So it's going to be first down and 10, the ball at the 31. And I believe that was Rinkus. Yeah, that was Hunter Greathouse that time, and Wyatt Connor. Put a stop to that one in a hurry. When you run into those, those two cats, you're not going to get too far. That's about 400 pounds of manhood that he ran into right there. So nice job that time to <laughs> those two guys inside. 400 plus pounds of manhood. I, I like that. I gotta, I'm going to have to steal that from you sometime and use that next week. And that's uh, Worsham. Charlie, on the carry. Charlie Perry on the tackle, so good job. Again, made him bounce it, and Charlie slid over past the tackle and made that tackle from that inside linebacker position. And really nice job by Charlie Perry. Clocks are running to eight minutes to go. So it's going to be third down and ten, and again, Harrison Central, they – have really slowed the pace down, which has made it kind of nice for us. It allows us to actually get our breath and sneak a drink of water every now and then. Cassidy's pass is air mailed out, and once again, Brady Hastings. For set, and here's a late, late flag, Chris. So hold the phone. Must have been against Harrison Central Buckeye Trail over there slapping each other some high fives. So. Personal foul against the Huskies, and I believe that was a dead ball penalty. So, yeah. should, that that time I think uh, Cassidy was trying to get it out of his hands so quick because uh, the outside rush was really getting to him for Buckeye Trail, and he tried to get rid of it so quick it slipped out of his hands, and he just threw a. We call that a duck. <laughs> <laughs> okay, to the outside, and it was just flailing through the air. So, if we would have had any hunters, that thing definitely would have got shot out of the sky. And I tell you, it looked like Hastings may have actually got a deflection on that when he was coming off that right end. So, be fourth down in a lot. Cassidy looking under pressure, still looking. Cassidy under pressure. And he dumps it short. Great coverage downfield. So, again, the Warrior defense Holds. comes up. And a couple of scores we'll try to sprinkle in. The third quarter, John Glenn leads Cambridge 35-14. to 14. So, uh, Indian Valley leading in the fourth quarter over Meadowbrook 47 the 16, Claymont, an opponent. They'll be coming here to Old Washington on September the 15th. They lead John Adams of Cleveland, Ohio, 46-0. to zero. So that's some of the uh, area scores. Newcomers Town still leading Bellsville, 20-0. to zero. Buckeye Trail looks like they're going to spread this thing out a little bit, maybe work on that passing game just a little bit. Williams dropping back. Going deep to, to Perry, and that's going to be pass interference, and he caught the football. Yeah, I think he, wow. caught, I think he caught that thing yeah. one hand. One hand, yes, he did. That's, nice. that's a really nice catch that time by Charlie Perry. Wow, what a catch by Perry. 7-18 left, and that'll be nice. The Warriors, they can decline the pass interference penalty. And what a catch. That was Yeah, that was that was one of those catches you have maybe once in a lifetime, especially in high school football. He got 
got his big paw on that and drug it in. So really nice job that time by Charlie Perry. So 7.09 left. Williams throwing. Brady Hastings unable to get to the football there. And it looked like they, Chris, looked like they had uh, Jansen out of the way. He was running the post pattern, trying to run the defense off, and they tried to get Hastings there underneath, but the ball just a little wide to the left. Yeah, looks like the – I'm not sure if they ran the right route. It looks like they were just off as far as what they were trying to do. I couldn't really tell what they were trying to do, but – Threw a nice ball that time, just wasn't anybody around. So it's going to be second down and 10. Low snap, Williams. Going to the end zone for Hastings, and he's got it! Touchdown! Warriors! And Brady fought off the defender that time, number 25, Alex Fluhart. Fluharty. Fluharty. Okay, yes. Okay, that time, and kind of just sealed him off like he was rebounding and jump up, jumped up and took it away. And uh, that time, uh, Williams made a nice pass to the outside, got it in the air, got some air under it, and gave our receivers a chance to go up and get it. So the Warriors get on the board. The Williams. Was that, Chris, was that 34 yards? I think it was, right around 34 yards. All right. 34-yard TD pass. To Hastings. So the two-point conversion. Alloway, double handoff. And that will go to Cohen Egan, and he takes it in. The two-point conversion is good. 6.56 left here in the fourth quarter. Your score is now Harrison Central 26, Buckeye Trail 8. We'll take a timeout and be back after this timeout. All right, welcome back to Old Washington. 34-yard touchdown strike. Braden Williams to Brady Hastings, who went up over a defender in the end zone to make the catch. And Cohen Egan takes the two-point conversion in. And the Warriors will kick it off. And that ball will go over Cassidy's head. And he has to pick it up. At about the four-yard line. <laughs> he picked it up at about the half-yard line. Didn't have much choice and then turned around and got tackled at the four. So he thought it yeah. was going to go in the end zone. And it, and it died. died. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, he kind of got stuck. And, and I tell you, Cassidy, he'll probably find uh, Travis uh, – Travis Todd sometime tonight and go, hey, I know what you're feeling like on these kickoffs. <laughs> yeah, you keep really. thinking the ball's going to go out of bounds or out of the end zone. And you're right. He picked it up at the half-yard line. He got it out to about the four. They're going to mark it at the three. So 6.52 left. Let's see if the Warriors can get a stop here. And that's Quito. Oh, on the carry. Tackle by Charlie Perry that time. Wow. Charlie's got to be nearing the 15 tackle. Oh, man. He's probably like, got wow. more than that. Yes, at least. 
He's been in on a bunch of them tonight. But, Chris, what a luxury stable of running backs the Huskies have. Keto at 225, he took about the third quarter off running the football after his touchdown. Yeah, and they, now they kind of rest him. He's they, fresh yeah, now. Yeah, that, this is only, I think, his second carry since his touchdown. Now – He's going to be the bell cow and look at him go. Wow. He's still on his feet. 40. And he'll be tackled at the 50 by Sammy Brown. Yeah, he ran through about eight wow. guys that time. And that will be about a 39-yard run. And I don't know how many tackles he broke on that in uh Keto's going to get a well-deserved break. Wow. Yeah, I would say multiple. Yeah, there was a bunch. He he had a couple guys. Looks like they just chewed him up in a blender in yeah. his leg. So. And the Huskies trying to flex their muscle here. This drive started, remember, back at their own three, and they're just running the football down the field. They've got it to about the Warrior 42. The Jackson's on the carry. Ty McGlumphy, on the Ty McGlumphy with the tackle. Initial hit, yeah, Ty got off the blocker that time, made a big hit, so big and, job, good job by Ty McGlumphy. And, Chris, I want to follow up that Ty McGlumphy tackle. We want to give a shout-out. You talked about people listening to her broadcast. Uh, to his uh, grandmother, Carla Taylor, who is uh, home watching the Warriors tonight. So, uh, Carla, we know you've had some uh, health ailments and uh, – We've been praying for you and hope to see you back in the bleachers soon. But glad we could bring this game to you. So, wow. That, that's going to be Atkins. He's going to get it to the 35, a gain of 12. Yeah, that, that hole opened up in a hurry there. And he, he really does hit the hole quick. Number 21 does for them. Uh, man, he, he gets through the hole and, and accelerates as he goes, and he just does a nice job. Yeah, the Warriors trying to run fresh people on on defense. Here's a fumble, and Cassidy's going to fall on it as Alloway gets in there. That ball will go back to the 41-yard line. 40. About the 42, two. right at the 42, I think. I'm just kind of surprised the Harrison Central has their starters in there oh, still. Well, no, uh, my bad, Brady Hire, he's in quarterback. Oh, okay. They he, do he's been in there on this drive, yes. So they they took uh, Cassidy out. And Alloway and Egan in on this that tackle. Is. But that's, that's a nice gain. Up to of about yards. seven yards. Yeah, they're they're just pounding it away, trying to get this game over with, trying to keep the clock rolling. So Harrison Central is just running it right at Buckeye Trail now. Yeah, the Huskies they have ran it on every play here, trying to overcome. The fumble snap, third down and eight from the thirty-three. Again, Rinkus has it. And he will get it right at about the 30-yard line, a gain of three. He's going to be about five yards short. Yeah, an initial hit that time was made by Wyatt Connor and cleaned up again by Charlie Perry. So, A lot of manhood on that stop, huh? <laughs> Todd had a solid game. Yes, he has. He's played well tonight. Uh, Mason, sophomore. Playing middle line or playing one of those linebackers in the center of the field and is really active, quick on his feet. Oh, Not a that, real big kid, but man, he's that the clock was running. They're going to have to add some time here on the clock. Three, three o five. Put three o five back on the play clock. Thank you. So the Warriors defense again. They've been stout tonight. Just wore down at times, my man. But they have made the Huskies earn every yard they have gotten tonight. Williams dropping back. He's got time. Throwing it deep for Hastings. 
Yeah, and he had him. He just threw it out of bounds. If he could have kept that inbounds, I think Brady probably would have caught that one. So, again, Buckeye Trail probably should probably should work on their passing game, and sometimes the other team doesn't appreciate that, but that's one of Buckeye Trail's big weaknesses is being able to throw the ball consistently. So, man, when you get an opportunity to work on it, you really need to work on it, and I think that's and, what they're trying to do now. And the Huskies, they've made – Wholesale substitutions. One good thing, McAfee's not in the secondary. He has been a heat-seeking missile the entire night. Williams rolling under pressure. A nice defense there as the ball was intended for Alloway. Applying pressure for the Huskies. Another bring up third down. And it's just tough to see the numbers with the glare of the lights from where we're at. Did, did you see, it looked like that may have been Michael Stock, yeah, I'm, who was on the coverage. I'm not sure. I think it may have been number 17. Yeah, or, that or said Stock. I think that that's 17, yeah. Thank you, sir. Third down and 10. Williams bobbles the snap, throws it. He's got a man. It is caught. And that's a first down. Brady Hastings. Yeah, that was a nice throw that time for Braden Williams. Brady just ran a curl route into the middle of the field there, and uh, Braden Williams put it right on him that time, threw a really nice pass in there. And, again, that's one of those things you do. And, again, you don't want to – you know, you hate to say this. You just hate to <laughs> think that they're trying to run it up, but they're really just trying to work on their passing game, which, again, that's something they really need to do. <laughs> so, uh, Hastings, nice catch. Throw by Williams and Brady Hastings. Man, what a nice game he has had on both sides. Williams under pressure. Steps up. He's going to keep it. And he's going to run. He'll get over midfield to about the 40-yard line. That's, that's a game close of about 15 yards. Let's see where they mark it. Yeah, he did a nice job stepping up in the pocket and finding those seams on the inside. A lot of quarterbacks want to bail and roll to the outside, and that's usually where the pressure's at. So if you can step up and break through that center, there's usually not a whole lot left once you do that. And, Chris, another score. That's not going to change the outcome. But, boy, to build a confidence and a little momentum going into next week's showdown with the Rocks, that would be huge. Williams throws. He's got a man. It's Egan. And he'll be tackled at about the 22-yard line. Yeah, and the Rocks are for real. They got a really nice team. They got a they got a nice quarterback, left-handed quarterback who throws the ball real well. They also have a, a really nice uh, tailback, and they got some experience. And, again, that's another team that's expected to go deep into the playoffs this year. And that was Flew Hardy on the tackle of the Eagle, or Egan reception. There's a pass, it is caught! The 10 yard line by the aforementioned Cohen Egan. So a minute 38. Timeout Warriors, and man, Braden Williams has thrown the football extremely well on uh, this drive. Yes, he has. He's put the ball on the money and made some really nice passes and stepped up into the pocket, found the seams. And, and you know, Braden hasn't had an opportunity to play a lot of quarterback, especially at the high school level. And sometimes it takes some time to kind of sense where the pressure's at and get a sense for that. And, you know, if you watch NFL games, they talk about that all the time. There's some really good athletes, but some guys just have a sixth sense of – knowing where that pressure's coming from and avoiding it without taking their eyes from downfield and finding those open receivers. So Braden is just working on some things. Buckeye Trail, again, working on some things, trying to get better. And again, uh, Jackson has Breyer, Walter, Wyatt Connor, Bucky Johnson, and Ty McGlumphy. The offensive line giving Williams uh, time to throw the last two uh, possessions. So again, Williams rolling out, moving the pocket, throwing it, and that pass is knocked away. And that was 
I think Kane Dunkel on the defensive play. Yeah, that's number 17 again, wasn't it? All right, number eight. Number eight, okay. Kane Dunkel on the coverage. Yeah, Dunkel, he was one of the, uh, I believe, eight receivers who caught a football last week. They've, they've got a lot of playmakers on both sides of the football. So second and 10, with the ball at the nine, or make it second and goal, excuse me, there's a pass in the end zone, it's caught! Touchdown! Cohen Egan! Cohen, he, he just went up and got it, jumped over some guys, made a catch, so again, nice job by Cohen Egan, all right. And again, Williams gave him a chance to make a play, so that's nice to see. Yeah, and uh, Braden Williams, like you said, th these are valuable reps right here for the, for the lefty. And back-to-back uh, -to -back touchdown passes. And this one to Egan. So, Cohen Egan. What Buckeye about this? Trail. Looks like they're going to try to kick this one. but Oh, no, I think – they got the T out there. Let's see. You're you're right. Here they come. Charlie Perry's going to. He's going to tee it up. Yeah, Williams will hold it. They get it down. Perry's kick is up. It is no good. So 129 left. The score is now 26 to 14. And uh, Chris, I, I tell you, like we said, the Warriors. They're going to drop to 0-2, but uh, they've got some positives going into another monster game at home next week against the Barnesville Shamrocks. Yeah, the Shamrocks, again, solid team. They got nice size. They got a good quarterback. They got good receivers, and they got an outstanding, I think, an all-state uh, tailback. So uh, they're going to be uh, very tough, very difficult to play, similar to like Harrison Central, maybe a little more talented overall. And uh, – it's going to be a really tough game next week, but uh, again, Buckeye Trail is getting better. They got some. They got a lot of young kids that are playing, especially on defense, and uh, experiencing that 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 uh, varsity football atmosphere is something that you just love to have those young kids do and get better as they go. Yeah, and they really eliminated the big play uh, uh, capabilities of uh, Harrison Central. Harrison Central went more uh, ground and pound than a lot of people expected. Buckeye Trail take a timeout. Maybe uh, we'll look at an onside kick. But Braden Williams, 34-yard touchdown pass to uh, Brady Hastings. And then Williams, the nine-yard touchdown pass to Cohen Egan. And uh, Chris Cohen Egan with uh, four touchdowns in the first two weeks. Uh, I tell you what, Cohen Egan is an exciting player to watch. Boy, if if you were able to just spread the field and get him in more open field situations, he would be a nightmare for some teams. And uh, he's just got he's got great speed. He's elusive. He's quick. Uh, he's got a lot going for him. I I think there's some some uh, college teams are really looking at him as a kick returner because of his speed and. He's, I mean, he's probably not going to be that 25-carry-a-night guy just because of his build. But, man, Cohen Egan really brings some ex excitement to the game. So there's the onside kick, and it is oh, fil no. fielded the by the Huskies. By and that was Brady Heyer who recovered it. He was hit a little late after the recovery, so that will be a – Personal foul, 15-yard penalty. Yeah, and that was just a poor decision by the Buckeye Trail player. He had recovered. It was on the ground just laying there and kind of took a shot, and you just hate to see that. And, Chris, Buckeye Trail, East Guernsey out here, some new administration. Sometime uh, during the year, we hope to have the superintendent, Michael Ferguson, up here at halftime for an interview as well as the uh, director of operations, uh, Craig Taylor. And, uh, and so that leads us uh, to give a shout out to the men they replaced. Chase Rosser, the superintendent, and uh, A.B. Aaron Bates, yeah, who was they, director of operations. Man, 
they they were as good as they come. And uh, I know Aaron Bates done a really nice job with the athletic department. He ran a tight ship, did things, you know, crossed his T's and dotted his I's, did a really nice job, and uh, really hated to see him go. He's done such a nice job. So uh, I'm sure things will continue to roll the way they have been. Buckeye Trail Athletics, the facilities have been outstanding. They keep they continue to get better year year after year. So hope things can just continue going in the direction they have been. Yeah, and Harrison Central, they've gone to uh, victory formation. As the uh, Warriors are uh, out of timeout. So, uh, yeah, and uh, Craig Taylor, the first game with all – the construction going around this week. I know it had to be a little nerve-wracking for the uh, first-year director of operations, but uh, everything uh, went off without a hitch, I guess you could say. Yeah, he's got some big shoes to fill, no no doubt, after Aaron Bates left. But I'm sure, Craig, he's a he's a Muskingum College graduate, played football with me over at uh, Muskingum. Great guy. I think he'll do an outstanding job. So I believe the Huskies will – We'll take one more knee, and then that'll, and then that will uh, wrap things up. And, uh, and the clocks are pretty much even. And as the clock's running out, uh, Chris, you want to give a shout out to our sponsors one last time. Again, uh, we want to thank our sponsors for blessing us with the opportunity to bring you this here tonight. And here they are: sponsors: Stop Nine Church of Christ, 360 Burger, Southeastern Equipment. Bears Den Steakhouse, Dennis Doubt, Southeastern Ohio Counseling Center, LLC, Old Washington Presbyterian Church, Mr. Lee's Family Restaurant, Darcy A. Wakefield Family Dentistry and Orthodontics, and Scott Ogle Realty. We also have a few more here. Connor Pushcarriage of Jacobs Vanninum Insurance Agency, Bicon Services and Engineering, Deep Cut Tavern, and Marathon Stations. We thank you, thank you from the bottom of our hearts for sponsoring this tonight and allowing us to do this. Absolutely, and uh, final score here from Old Washington. Harrison Central, 26. Buckeye Trail, 14. We'll take our final timeout, and then when we come back, we'll wrap things up here from the Baker Activity Complex. Welcome back here to the Baker Activity uh, field and uh, the campus of Buckeye Trail High School as it was Harrison Central who came in on the road and uh, pulled off a very workmanlike victory, knocking off a very game Buckeye Trail Warrior Squad. And 
how the scoring went. Uh, 741 in the first quarter, it was Michael Keto who would take it in for a six yard touchdown run. Keto would then uh, convert on the extra point. And uh, that would give Harrison Central a seven to zero lead, a lead they would take into the second quarter, where again, with 10.02 left in the second quarter, it would be Blake Atkins who would take it in from 10 yards out. The uh, extra point by Quito was blocked by Brady Hastings, and that gave the Huskies a 13-0 lead. Then the big score uh, of the game with 3.55 left in the first half, it would be again Michael Quito, a 15-yard touchdown run. The two-point conversion was no good, and uh, that would give Harrison Central a 19-0 lead going into the half. And remember, it was Cohen Egan who got the big interception down at the goal line on the last play of the half to keep it at 19. And then it would be Harrison Central on their second drive of the second half with 7.29 left. It would again be Michael Quito. This time taking it in from uh, one yard out. The extra point was good by Quito, and Harrison Central would extend their lead to 26 to zero. And then fourth quarter, or excuse me, that would that score occurred in the fourth quarter. My bad. And then Buckeye Trail would get the ball, and then with 6:56 left, Braden Williams would throw a 34-yard touchdown strike to Brady Hastings, who went up over the defender, and. Uh, Caught it in the end zone. The two-point conversion ran in by Cohen Egan would make the score 26 to eight. And then with only 129 left in the game, again, Braden Williams would hook up this time with Cohen Egan on the nine-yard touchdown pass in the end zone. And uh, the extra point was no good. And uh, that's your final score, 26 to 14. Harrison Central with the win. Keto leading the rushing attack. That was really the story of the game offensively for Harrison Central. And then McAfee and a host of defenders. Really, uh, the Warriors would get the ball moved past midfield, but they really wouldn't let them get the ball uh, inside the 20 until the last couple of drives. Yeah, Harrison Central did a nice job of keeping Buckeye Trail out of the end zone, especially early in the game. And then Buckeye Trail honestly played pretty well defensively. Overall, they're on the field a lot in the basically the first three quarters. And uh, basically this game could have got out of hand, but they really hung in there and did a nice job. I'm thinking defensively for Buckeye Trail, Brady Hastings had an outstanding game tonight. Charlie Perry had a bunch of tackles. Uh, the defensive line up front played pretty well. Uh, they did a pretty good job. They just, again, they need to get a little bit better uh, offensively. Uh, Buckeye Trail hung in there, played 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 a team that's probably going to be in the playoffs this year, played them pretty tough. Yeah, and the Warriors, i tell you, this opening start at Caldwell, you know, uh, playoff uh, power the past few years. Now Harrison Central, they're, they're as good as any team maybe that, you know, that we'll see. And then next week, it doesn't get any easier with the Shamrocks coming in. But, Chris, offensively for the Warriors, they were able to move the football. They would drive it 40, 45 yards of possession, but then uh, get turned away. And a big trivial question for you, who's the punter for Harrison Central and Buckeye Trail? don't know <laughs> because we we did one. we did not have a punt <laughs> yeah that's right uh tonight yeah and, much do you know who does punt for well, <laughs> I, th I think it's charlie perry but oh, i'm okay. not from yeah but we have but you know we'll, you'll have to tune in next week to see because they <laughs> they may not decide to punt there but uh try uh Parker Hutton, who was very quiet offensively for Harrison Central, but they didn't throw the ball to him that much. He came up with two big uh, interceptions. And for Buckeye Trail, Cohen Egan uh, got an interception. Jackson Hess got an interception. And uh, Sammy Brown Sammy got Brown. an interception. So uh, 
you know, both teams, I believe, combined for about eight turnovers it'd be between them. So, uh, and Buckeye Trail had theirs early in the game, which really allowed it to, you know, really get, get spread out there. But, uh, again, Buckeye Trail played solid. They, I was – I was kind of worried about this game tonight, knowing what Harrison Central did to us last year, and and uh, Buckeye Trail did a nice job hanging in there, played tough, played physical, really made some big hits at times, and and kept the game uh, really pretty close overall. And Buckeye Trail's got a lot to look forward yeah, to the rest the, of the season. Yeah, and the offensive line, I tell you, McGlumphy, Briar, Walter, Bucky Johnson, you know, filling in, not an easy defensive line to face. They really held themselves accountable. I'm very impressed with uh, Coach Kearns and his coaching staff. I tell you, they had them ready to play tonight, and they had the game plan that it would take to get a victory, but uh, just uh, fell short in that. But a lot to build on for the Warriors. And, again, they played Barnesville. Barnesville, I'm sure they were here scouting this game live the Warriors coaching staff will get to go to Bel Air tomorrow you know stop maybe at Chick-fil-a on the way and then uh zoom right down to Bel Air and, and I, watch I the think, Shamrocks play I, and this is going to be hard to believe but I think they said this is the first time that Barnesville and Bel Air has ever played that, that is that, hard to that believe. is hard to believe because yes. they're not that far from no, it that is all, that, I think they said that that's the first time they've they, ever played Chris Starr, you continue to drop the knowledge. <laughs> That's why you get paid the big bucks by Caleb Graham Productions. Well, that wraps things up here from the Bill Baker Activity Complex here on the campus of Buckeye Trail High School. And as we head out, again, we want to thank our fine sponsors who helped make this broadcast uh, possible, that we could bring it here on Caleb Graham Productions. Of course, we want to thank uh, Caleb for uh, – Stepping up and uh, doing the Buckeye Trail home games again this year. And how about our uh, new sidekick, sidekick here? Uh, Mr. James Huggins stepped in and did a great job producing it. James, thank you. And uh, once again, I'm merely Tom Strasser. And for my partner in crime, Chris Starr, we want to wish everyone a very uh, safe and a happy weekend. And enjoy it. And uh, be sure to tune in to the 740 Sports All Access show next Thursday. We'll hear from Coach Kearns as well as Coach Norman and Coach Leak of Meadowbrook and Cambridge, respectfully. Next week, Chris, big rivalry games. Barnesville at Buckeye Trail, Cambridge at Meadowbrook. Ooh, so that's a big one. Be, be a lot. Yeah. So tune in to the 740 Sports all-access pregame show. That'll be Thursday night at uh, 7 p.m. So, again, uh, we thank everyone out for uh, giving us a little of your weekend. And, once again, your final score here from Old Washington, Harrison Central 26, Buckeye Trail 41. On behalf of the Caleb Graham's production family, good night, everyone.